Today we're going to be painting a really cool Montana scene that has a lot of big sky and some strips of light running through it with cattle and a very nice spring summer type of scene. I picked out all the colors I could see when I looked at the reference picture. I have my solvent which is Gamzol. I have a couple of brushes. I have a couple of knives to work with when I get all the paint on. I have a pencil that I use to draw and I have my razor and that's to get those sticks prepared. So I hope you enjoy what we're going to do today and let's get at it. Today I'm going to actually start with white and I want to get sort of the, the line that goes between the sky and the mountains. Start there. Got to have a place to start. White is not a bad way to start. Sometimes people start with a dark color, but it sort of gives you a chance to block out what areas you, you know, you're going to be doing. Because your drawing can take you just so far. And then if you start painting, you can easily lose your lines. So if you block out um, certain areas that help you keep your design, that's not a bad place to start. I'm hitting where the clouds are coming up. Now the, the painting is a bunch of clouds and it also has a little bit of light, lighter parts. So I have background mountains, I have foreground mountains. So I can also go put some lines in down here just to mark it. And, and it isn't going to stay perfectly white if it hits where I've drawn, but this is just to block it in. And we're going to get some clouds in here. I start out by trying to get on the edge to get the thinner lines. I can go on the sides to get the thicker. So that I get a little dark in here. I can just push it in a little bit harder. A lot of that white will come back in because it is kind of a stiff stick. It's an oil stick and so it has a lot of wax in it to make it so it stands up to a lot of pressure. But when you put the pressure on the canvas, if it gets like a funny color dark in here, you can just press a little bit harder and it will put new paint down. Move the old paint aside, put new paint down. You don't have to spend a lot of time getting all the details in this stage, but you got to try to keep your accuracy as much as you can because it'll pay off in multiple fold by the time you get done with this painting. And now I have some areas that aren't going to be as super white, but they're going to be a little bit lighter. I'm thinking light. I'm thinking what's the light part of the designs? And there it comes way up here. For some reason, even though if you draw it fairly accurately, I can get a little lost. <laughs> Not sure if everybody gets lost, but I can get lost. I want to not go too fast, not go too slow. This cloud comes way up here. He's kind of in the back. If you press a little bit less hard, you will get a little bit less paint on there. And when you start mixing colors, it'll be... You won't have so much paint on there. If you're going to mix two or three colors in a spot, which is kind of what, where we're headed, you want to make sure you, that each layer isn't too thick because you'll end up with gobby paint and you don't really need that. You can always add more. It's harder to add less. Take a look at this a little bit. Go a little in here. 
and kind of come over to the far side. Now at the bottom I have a couple of places that are actually in the foreground mountain that are going to be a little bit lighter grasses. I'll go ahead and put some of that in here. And in here a little. The, the grasses in the front are going to be, there's a strip of light in here. Part of that is really a light, almost looks like a, hmm, a really light green, and then it has also like brighter green. But I'm going to keep that light, keep track of that. So that should help me. And okay, I think I'm going to take a little bit of blue in here while I'm working on that section. I'm kind of just filling up the space like the canvas itself. I want to make sure I have enough on there because the color is going to be a little bit changed, but well, not too much. I'm going to switch a gear here and come in where my line is. I have a straight line across the bottom, and I measured it. And the reason I did that is I want to kind of keep that line, at least one line in here, that kind of sets everything up. And the trees will come in front of it and behind it, but there's got to be at least a, a starting point for this line. And, well, it always helps me anyway. Just draw it in over here. The color I'm using here is a Payne's Gray. So it's like a bluish black color. I can even put in a little bit of hints of these trees. I have trees in here. Uh, just a little hints of them. I don't have to finish it out. But just to kind of mark my spots, just blocking it in. And then maybe I'll, I'll just take a little bit of it and go really on the side and just put in a little bit of color. You can see that it's um, not filling in all of the nooks and crannies of this canvas. Just enough to kind of set off a darker spot here. can even do a little bit maybe with these mountains just the tiniest bit and what that will do is it'll give you it'll give us like a little darker because when we put the other colors on there it, it will start setting up a darker uh, set of colors so we want that what we're trying to do by the end is get the values to be pretty much right on and so if we can get some of the darks in here Is that a blow? Okay. And then right in a kind of a field back here behind these trees, it's got a dark spot. Uh, the sun is just right where it's leaving a dark spot. So I'm going to go ahead and try to put that in a little bit. And it thins out way over here. And now we can kind of come up to. Uh, I'll go 
a little higher on here just to give that a little bit this light part can be a little bit lighter or a little bit thinner so that it has a little more energy to it just a tiniest bit up in this group up here mountains and maybe under some the shadow part of some of these clouds coming across here doing with this color is I'm then kind of making a little bit of continuity throughout the whole piece with that color so that it holds together better in the end. Now it doesn't show up like that at the beginning because you haven't blended all the colors together. But if you miss that color somewhere in the piece and it and it should string all the way through the piece then it's hard to come back to it in kind of a congruent way. So that's uh, kind of just my approach to it. called azure blue and it's um yeah, it's a really nice color it's it's not purpley or anything it's it's more of a kind of a thallow color but I'm gonna put it in here into these clouds light touch through here just to give that continuity come up this way now on the on my photograph it looks a little bit pur more purpley and I have purples to put in there too but one of the things I really enjoy is to have a little bit of a thalo with a purple in the clouds I think that they those two colors have a way of playing off each other if you've got the right ones and so that makes it kind of fun okay so I'm going to take and just put a little bit kind of on the edges of this lighter blue sky just kind of just highlighting where it meets up with these clouds for some reason when you do that it has a tendency of kind of making it look a little more three-dimensional and then up here Get some of this our goal is to try to get all the colors on and hopefully in the right places Then we're going to kind of do some, well I call it tapping in and then brushing in so that you can mix the colors. I have, my process has a lot to do with kind of taking all the colors and putting, putting them in so that it mixes right on the canvas instead of mixing solid colors, which I, I'll do at the end there, but at the end of the process because I'll be putting in details and those details need to have the right color but in this beginning phase it's really fun because you're really mixing this on the canvas itself and that is really fun really cool and fun okay so a little bit in here let's see if I've missed any major things <laughs> probably you can always come back so you save time if you get it close to right at the beginning Now I think I can, hmm, maybe I will go to like a purple, 
I have a kind of bluish purple and let's see what I can put in here. Now this is going to play really dark and nice. to hit these darker areas because I have other purples too and I can match them up better with the lighter parts of the cloud if I don't get crazy and carried away. And I have a little purples in this, this mountain over here. Right in there. A little down in here for fun. See, and my foreground actually happens to be in a big old shadow, so dark is okay there. And because most of my action is not focused on that foreground, I'm going to be focusing a lot on the clouds and the mountains in the middle middle ground. I can put in a lot of really cool dark colors without having to worry about the details of that right now anyway. Um, I think I'm going to take uh, maybe this purple in here. So I'm going to start um, working in some of the purples. And one of the things that's really neat about clouds, we, you know, we're always kind of trained to see a color for a thing. And so when you think of clouds, you know, we learn early on that they're white. But really, even white parts of the cloud um, are three-dimensional. And that means that a single color actually looks flat when you paint it. So if you add in the colors, really light ones, most of the time, it'll actually give it a three-dimensional look, which is cool and what we're trying to do. Put some down in here. I can even now see this is a lighter purple, but if I mix it with this darker purple, it comes out looking halfway to cloudism. So we like it. I got a piece of stuff I don't want there. And you can see right there where I just um, took that line, or even let's look at here. If you put the second color on, it automatically mixes itself. So um, that's a good thing to do. You need to have enough colors to do that. And you have to have the right amount of paint. So it's a little bit of the Goldilocks, just right kind of amount. And or you could say the sweet spot. to go down here and mix this into and this is going to make a more muted color because it's got a little bit lighter tones to it um, but I've got it up here so if I match it like if I think about my sky coming towards me and I think about the land coming towards me because it's such a big sky this is going to be closer than like a lot of pictures you'll see so if you match the top to the bottom with the colors you're going to end up with something a little more realistic, I think. Okay, and I have sort of a purpley green in here, right up in here. So I'll put this purpley in, and then later on I'll put in some of the, the green, like an olive green, and it should, right where I had my whites, and it should play really good. Hopefully those two colors will play well together. And I'm going to bring this down into these. Uh, that's 
coming along okay so I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit over this dark purple and that will make it a little bit lighter and that will push that mountain seem it'll seem like it's moving farther back all right now maybe a okay this is a nice blue I'm going to go ahead and stick that over at the top of this so when you're figuring out how to put your colors down one at a time, the colors that are adjusting the main color, you can do it one of two ways. You can either put down the main color and then adjust it with the other colors, or you can put the other colors down first and then bring in the main color so that it will pick up those colors but still leave the main color at the end of, you know, of your strokes. So in this case, it, these look a little bit blue more than purple but the purple makes it look more three-dimensional so I put the purple down first in this case and sometimes you to get it to be the right value what you're going to end up doing is you're going to use the same color but you're just going to lose use a lighter touch and so you have less of that paint in uh, uh, that you're putting down so it won't be so prominent and that's um, exciting you can do that really easy with these oil sticks whereas with a brush it kind of when you use that brush or other tools they can be kind of dominating like the paint gets to be dominating whatever you put on there last and in this case you can put down light coats and then let future colors dominate later on so I kind of like that alright so now I have to figure out I have a little kind of a blue ridge of mountains back here that sort of fall well, past the trees and past this four forward um, when they're really in the back. They look really dark though and so you want to set them up. And these guys have quite a little blue, bit of blue in them. And what's neat is is at this point you can see like real designy. So if you're going to go to realistic you gotta have to have a good design to start with. So you should be able to see in these parts of the process that that design that's coming. And even if you add a lot of details to it and you don't see an obvious design, I guess you would say, it's still in there. And so it supports everything and, you're, and then your details are just frosting on that cake. Alrighty, now... Let's see what to think of. All right, so now I have kind of a, a dull purple, and I'm going to try to put it where it goes, wherever I see it, and it goes. It's a fairly reddish purple, and it's a little darker. So it's kind of like you're drawing the same picture again and again, only you're just doing with the colors. So. It's not the entire picture with the colors, but you should have a good composition with each color so that each color covers each part of this picture where it would show up, where your eye can actually see that it's there. You should be putting that in. And then all the colors have their own composition if you were to break it down. And so if you can follow that right composition, then when the painting is done, it just has all sorts of cool spots to look at. It'll bounce from here to here to here because one color here to here to here because of another color. And that's what's cool. Sometimes I think that if you, if you actually paint something on and you don't get enough different colors in it, whether you're doing uh, the sticks or whether you're doing just a regular paint with the brushes you can end up having it be too flat looking and not enough energy going through it so 
that's kind of the that's sort of the basics of why I do what I do. Now let us come in here. See what, okay, this almost is green like it looks it looks kind of blue, but it is kind of greenish when it goes down on here, so it ends up looking very gray. And that is not a bad thing. I'm going to say this to about the grays. Um, and when I say grays, they can be have a little color in them, but they're lighter versions of mixed colors. And what they do is they allow these paintings to uh, live very well in in like settings where people have put their paintings. So because the decor that you have, whether it's white walls, colored walls or whatever, they have a tendency of going with, and especially in the horizon, it goes with whatever colors that you have in your space. So um, if you pick one that's really good for that, you can change your wall colors and everything and it'll still go in your decor pretty easy. I know a lot of people don't uh, worry too much about whether it goes with your decor, but I think it's nice to have something that you can live with. And we're just building this up. And this gray goes really great in here because it's a friendly color. It's a friendly gray. It's not just a black and white. It's uh, actually, it looks fairly blue, but when you put it next to these other colors, it has a grayish, a real grayish look to it, but it doesn't steal all of your pretty colors at the same time. So we like it. We like it. They're good sky or cloud colors. They do go in the land too, but they're, they're good for the clouds because you get that gray look without it going to a dull gray. And colorful grays are help you to stave off that dull grayness, which we don't like. And then down in here, this is a good one for down in here. So I'm going to bring this out here a little bit and then hit this brighter line. Adobe color. And this is my background field. I don't want to get rid of all my trees quite, so I'm just kind of popping it in between those. And I have a little bit, a little kind of tiny bit up here. And I can take a kind of a, oh, it's sort of a, It's kind of an olive green, and I put that in over there too. Now, the olive green comes towards you a little bit because it's, you know, it's not quite, well, this is lighter and brighter, but I think that in the end, it's going to end up being, I can even put a little in there. It, it sort of gives it that feeling of being farther back. And this is the main color on that, that plane there. And now I have an actual gray. I don't know what that's going to do. So let's find out. Okay, so I'm going to probably here take a purple and maybe not that one. Take this purple. Yeah, better. And that pushes it back. because the purple has a little blue in it, right? And so the blue makes it look like everything is moving backwards. Put 
put some in these mountains a little bit. Nice bunch of really far back mountains there. And that takes down that kind of yellowy. So, really, you know, if you're doing complementary colors together, it'll dull things down. So this, uh, this, um, the color I put on there first is sort of a yellowish color. It's called Adobe, but by putting that little bit of purple on there, it really kind of dulls it down. Uh, I'm going to take my gray now and see if that's something that I can work with. Clean it off a little bit. One of the things to know about colors in your landscape is that when you're looking out across a, lo a large, long area, the colors don't all have the same. Okay, I'm going to say this in the way I understand it. They don't. The colors don't have the same length of ray, so the shorter rays dissipate first into the distance, and the shortest ray is yellow, and the longest ray is blue. So even if you went and drove over there, uh, whatever you're looking at in the foreground would be the same. It would be, you know, like a green color or whatever. But if you look at it from a distance, it looks like blue is um, over top of everything. And that's really because the blue, the yellow dissipates first. And when the yellow dissipates first, if, if this is too bright of a yellow, then it makes it look like it's too close. And that's why we kind of tone it down a little. Now, I'm going to add some of this into these clouds which actually makes it, them look a little bit like they have a little more um, of a yellow in them which is good because we got to keep our design going uh, throughout the piece. So that plays this kind of a yellowish color so you can see and down in here we can even put some down in here just to make a bed for this big scene, this big cloud, so they have to have a place to sit sit on there, if you will. And then up in here a little. So what I'm doing this bottom, I can leave it darker in the corners, kind of vignette it. And I vignette it because everything in this part of the country is kind of horizontally flat. You know, so you get a very strong horizontal line and if you do a vignette, it um, keeps people from going out too fast, out of the, visually out of the picture. And you don't really want them to go out of the picture if you don't have to. Okay, so I'm going to hit these farther greens with a bluish green. And so they look farther back. And these are going to go in between these trees. Around here and just like any other place with a lot of farming we live in a ranching area but part of ranching is kind of farming for most people who have like cattle or whatever because they actually grow the feed that these cattle will eat so they they grow things on different kinds of vegetation on different fields so you're gonna have different kinds of greens in here and plus the fact that on this particular time on this particular day you have a very, very um, enthusiastic sky, if you will. <laughs> so I'm going to stick some down in here of that same kind of green. And part of that is just because um, it's in the shadow. And so it's not a bad green for that because the shadow will also tend to make it look a little bit blue. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put some touches of that in here. And then I've got a lighter version. And so I can hit the tops of that field with the lighter and kind of make it so it's got a transition from the dark of the green into this adobe, grayish adobe. Okay, and also because I have a, I actually have yet another one. I don't know, let's see if this might be more of a cloud color. So comparatively, this is the color I was using. It's a little more yellow. This one up here is a little more turquoisey. And so I'm going to see if I can't get some of that because I really want to get some green in the sky. And we don't often think of green being in the sky. But if you put it in there, it's going to add continuity. And that is a big word for me. I mean, I love that word. I think that's what you should be doing. And that way, it looks like it's all part of the same day at the same time. Stick a little bit there and kind of green this up in here. And when you start to tap it together and uh, you know blend it, it's going to maybe it won't even show up as green, but it'll make a difference. It'll impact this the rest of the piece properly. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to pop him here and there. And I might even put some underneath and this is going to make the grass line that goes up to the trees. And I'm just starting that. There's got a bunch of different greens in it for what you can see. I might not put them all in because I don't know that you have to do that. But I want to make sure that this color is going around. It's coming up here. It's got a little up here and comes back down around in here. I just want to make sure I don't forget any major spots. Okay. Now I'm going to oh, pick, let's see. I have a couple of really bright greens. And this one is a little bit more on the blue side. So I'm going to stick him back behind these trees and he's going to become friends with the, the brighter green that I'm going to put in front of the trees. So they look like they're part of the same kind of field and yet one has um, is more in the distance and also has a little bit more shadow on him. So I can put a little bit up to the front just to uh, make sure that that it all will match together and just put a tiny bit in here. Just wanna. Okay. And then I take his friend who's brighter. And this guy's quite bright. And I'm gonna put him towards the front. And this is gonna be in front of the the tree line. just a little touch of it back here like it's highlighting this darker green so that they can work together okay now I want to kind of just make sure that I have like a measurement know where it's all off This one over here is um, a little bit high. Okay, good to know. I take my blue and come back in and kind of drop it down a little. So I'm going to take a real sallow blue and come back into these mountains and see if I can't get them to be a little closer to the color they appear to be. And goes over 
here and then down into this field. This style was kind of like a, it's what I use as the primary blue, so it goes with everything. I might have to stick a little bit up into these trees again, get a little bit of action back into these trees. It got kind of short and non-existent, so we're going to bring them back in a little bit. And I'm going to eventually, after we mix this all together, I'm going to come back in with uh, brushes or with a palette knife and put some detail that's a little closer to the real colors. So if it's not like finished. It's not meant to be finished here. We're not at that point. But now I'm going to hit the clouds a little bit here. And... I don't have to go a whole lot on here, but so I'm going to put that turquoise back in a little bit. Well, turquoise, fallow to me. <laughs> and some in here. Uh, now I start paying a little bit of attention to my design again and make sure I'm not completely going rogue on it. I don't want it to be crazy because then that's a lot of, you know, if you make it so that it's it's fun, it's fun to put the paint on, but if it goes too fast for your pace or sometimes too slow, I think you end up doing a lot of fixing up because, you know, your brain has to go at the same pace and mine doesn't. <laughs> I end up going, you know, like if I'm thinking through with something, it takes me a lot longer then when I get in the groove of painting so uh, my analysis skills don't come in while I'm you know if I get too crazy and then I have a lot of rework so this is pretty cool what's happening here now I have a couple colors I didn't use and I wonder to myself do I need to use them and I think there's one here this is a very neat color. This is um, a, what they call, it. I think the name of it is um, Cad Maroon. It is a dark reddish color. And so I can bring that in. Um, my foreground will have a little bit of that. If you are going to mix colors, you don't need to have a lot of colors, but if you have the three representation of the three primaries, you're going to be doing a good job. So even though this is a purple or whatever, purple has the blue and red, so there it's represented. Yellow and green, yellow and blue makes green. So I have all the basic colors in this piece. If you have a representation of like the red, then you it looks more three dimensional. And as I told you before, the yellow dissipates first, and then the red as it goes into the distance, and then the blue. So if you put in your middle ground some red, it'll shoot that back. So it takes you know it, it takes care of that. The other thing that red is really cool for is if you've got green trees. because the complement will darken that up typically. This isn't uh, perfect right now but when you mix the colors to get the final colors in there it's going to make a lot more sense. Uh, but like let's say you've got a pine tree and you've got some needles on it that are kind of broken. The best way to, to kind of bring those out a lot of times is to add red in where the, the shadowy parts of the green are. Now, you say, should I put this up in the sky? 
Well, I think the first thing you got to do is make sure it doesn't have all these other colors on there because it picked up a lot of the greens. And so if I make it pretty good, I can literally go in here super duper light. Not too far in the back, distant ones, but up in the front here. And it, it actually is going to make that come towards you. So yeah, why not? <laughs> One time I did that at a show when I first started out, and it turned out to be, you know, I was just kind of, I don't know, demonstrating it, and I didn't know how that was going to go, and it turned out much better because it really pulls it forward. And that was exactly, and the person who ended up buying it told me later it was one of his favorite things, and I was like, oh, thank goodness, because I was kind of taking a risk. <laughs> Alrighty, that should work for that. And then I have a little bit of a pink here. Two pinks, I have a light pink. Let's see if I can get this to work. It's going to play almost as a white, but it's going to play as a cloud white, which is not pure white, like I told you before. And if you use these colors, when you get done and you get towards the end and you need to really beef up a cloud of the white, you can use pure white and it will really stand out. If you use it all the time and, the, and it's the only thing you're using for a cloud, then um, you're going to have, well, you know, trouble at the end maybe because you need to have just one tick up of value than more than you had, and so um, you'll end up with a little bit of a problem. So some of these really light colors really work good to set you up. And I'm going to go under these clouds here just to differentiate them from each other. And there's a little something something in here. Okay. I'm going to work in this little greenish color now just to get that in the clouds. And that green against that pink really plays well off of each other because essentially they're complementary. So if they sit next to each other, they're going to play off of each other really nicely. And I'm thinking clouds right now. I'm going to go up in here. build these lighter areas down a little bit and this might not be the only color I would use. Uh, see, Now that mixes really good with these colors but I, I can get it looking like it's a bigger a bigger cloud. Even though it's the same space overall it if you make those areas look prominent they're going to play as, a, as being a bigger cloud I think. something up in here. Okay. And I think that I probably have enough colors and paint on there now to get to the next step. the next step is to tap in the paints. So what's going to happen here is you got a lot of really bold colors and when you tap them together they dull down and they purposely dull down. Anytime you take a blue, a yellow, and a red and you tap them together, you brush them together, they dull down right away. They go darker, they go duller. So all of these colors have some mix of the things in there. So when you tap them together, it's going to have a tendency of dulling it down. Now, that's normal, and I wouldn't even worry about that. Because what's going to happen after this step, just to give you an idea, is you're going to end up popping colors back in. 
So the strategy in the painting is, is there, there's a couple I just started at the top, but I go um, like maybe in this blue. This blue is supposed to be in the distance, so it's farther back. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do like color to light color. And so I don't have to wipe my hand off at every single pop. But by doing this too, and you'll notice I'm not making it smooth. I'm doing nothing like that. I'm just making it pop in there. My, I'm using my pinky finger because it's got like the least amount of extra action to it. It's just like just popping that in there. And I'm not taking all of the smoothness away because now it looks a little brush strokey. So that's really cool. And I'm going to go with the dark colors and the farthest away colors. And that's where I start. This is a relatively large, this is a 16 by 20 piece. And so I'm trying not to, I'm trying to give you a good video, but um, it's a stretch for me to get all the way over there from here. So hopefully I get it right and I'll check it afterwards to make sure it is right. Now I don't have so much paint on here that it's super globby or anything. It's enough. It's it's again the sweet spot and enough paint to, to go into the canvas and make a nice smoothness. You know, fills up the holes without being overly painted so that you have all sorts of you know gunk. You don't want the gunk. So I can come back in and I can take my sky and pop it in. Now I have cloud edges right off the bat. What I'm doing with my finger popping it in is the first step of, of um, getting the getting some edges, if you will. So the next step after this one, I'm setting it up so that it easy, it's easy to look at the piece and figure out what needs to be smoother and then take a brush to it. Um, what's neat about that is if you don't really like brushing, or like you, if you're using your brush and it takes forever to clean it out, you go, gosh, I wish I didn't have to do that. Well, the brush stroke is really just to move the paint. It's not about applying the paint. This paint is already now applied. So it makes the brush clean up a lot easier. <laughs> and when you get done with this process, you know, because it dulls down a little bit and because it gets a little smoother, it's going to have more of a realistic look to it, but it is still a painting, so that's good. So I'm looking for light colors, I'm looking for some direction, I'm looking like this green, it, it's um, kind of an alien weird color, but it goes in there okay. Make sure it's going in the right direction, it's got some continuity to where it's at so if I want to have a little more green somewhere I can touch the green and then touch the other spot and make that just transfer the paint that way and it doesn't have to be super duper smooth it just needs to be spread out properly so when you get to that brush it's going to be easy to manipulate that paint into those edges you're looking for. So I'm not wanting to overdo. The other thing I always have to be careful of is when I'm doing this I can get into a rhythm which then gets into a pattern and then it might end up with some lines like this kind of looks like a line and that gets to be distracting. So you want to try to look for that. Anything that you know everybody probably has a thing that they do that is going to be distracting somewhere along the line and that's one of those for me is I always end up with a line here and there so my finger is going in one direction and uh, I that's probably where it starts from so I seem to have probably a good amount of paint and what I'm doing is I want to cover up that tone that I had on there before the blue tone and that's because okay here's the thing if you don't, if you have sections that have any large amount that has no paint on it, but because you toned it, you don't worry about it, you can do that. That's cool. But like if you want to add another layer of paint later, it might act like a pothole. It depends on how much paint you have. In this case, I don't think I'm going to end up with that problem, but it's happened to me before where I had a little bit extra paint on 
Um, little things can happen, like it wasn't perfectly dry when I came in with the next coat and I really brushed it too much and it just pulled the skin right off of that paint and, you know, a couple spots and it kind of made a pothole. And so when you try to put the next paint on there, you know, it looks like, it looks like a, a pothole. <laughs> Like when they're fixing the street, you know, they they don't just put rocks in there or something. They have to kind of work it up and make sure that it's going to be like smooth. <laughs> You'll see it is I guess what I'm saying. You'll see that spot like if you're looking at the painting from the side, like let's say you put it in your house and um, you're walking alongside of it when you're coming down the hall or something and you can see so you want to have it be correct and that way the person who would ever you know want to have it in your house would feel good about it okay now I'm gonna come out underneath here go this way I don't want to have to do too much with that line here because I'm going to come in with the brush and, and I, if I blend it too much then I kind of lose that line so I can work with that with the brush and after a while you get used to what do you want to work with with the finger and what do you do with the brush. Now this one I'm moving the blue paint up. I start into the blue and move it up. And that takes this line which has gotten fat and I take from the top and down and that will reduce that line so I've got a much thinner line so anywhere where you can do that I think the next steps are always easier if you kind of make that, those corrections now you know my my pinky fingers the smallest fingers but it doesn't mean that you know it's going to work for all the sections because you get down into the details then your brush is really going to come in handy because after all you're not going to be able to get it with just your your finger well most people and the next thing I'm looking at here is this ice you know it looks bloppy I get that but it won't after you, you can come in and, and finesse it with the brush and, and you know if you kind of like that look you can stop <laughs> I mean some people do so I've got kind of a line right here let's let's get rid of that right now go across bring it down because um, then when you get done with this this after you get the brush on that then what I normally do is let the painting dry and then come back in with the details now you can do details but remember the paint is still wet and so if you can manage it then that's great because you might actually get the painting done in a session I kind of like looking at the paintings for a couple of days because I I'm like I say my my ability to analyze while I'm painting is really kind of diminished so if I put this painting somewhere where every morning I get on the the stationary bike then I can re look at it review it look at it and it takes a couple days for it to dry and if you're going to do that approach you want it to get quite dry because what will happen is if you don't is that um, it, if it gets like tacky sticky and, and, and you know the, the the wax in this paint is going to feel tacky even when it's um, fully dry just a little bit and then when you put a varnish on it, it doesn't but I don't mean that kind of just with a slight tack I mean like it's starting to cure up and if you if you touch that one spot it's going to just it, it could just peel it off and it it's just like too much pressure so if you're gonna put something on there it's still a little tacky you just have to make sure that you're not over brushing that's a killer anyway it just takes a while to figure out what that means and each person's got a different 
you know, way of going. <clears throat> okay, now we're getting down to the mountains. And what you can do is you can take the side of your finger and put it down and just pull it and just come up here and pull it and you know even if it's not like a super smooth transition there sometimes that looks a little more mountainy anyway I'm gonna hit this guy there's one way in the back here that's got it's light and it has some snow on it and it kind of drifts right into that cloud bank sort of so I can take the clouds over the top and get that line and if I need to smooth it out more I can do it with a brush but I'm telling you it looks pretty cool when it's just sort of organic looking in a way now I got that kind of okay so you really this is the part where you do a lot of finessing and that is half the half of the you know what makes it yours you finesse it the way that it makes sense for you to finesse and you know even if everybody's standing in a row painting the same paint outside or has the same photograph or anything how you finish the thing out is going to make you know everybody's going to know whose it is if they know your work and that's that's a more important signature probably than just the signature you're going to put on there anyway which you should always do, but I mean it's um, the signature of the artist's hand and that's really cool. Okay, now I'm going to come down here and hit that guy and brings it forward and brings this back and forward till it looks natural and down here and down here. Oops, too daisy. And then I'm going to hit the green. So I'm going from really from mountain wise, I'm going from back to front. To be careful. Careful. Now when I come in with my details, I can bring back some of that nice green I had. You know, when it mixes together, it mixes together and then you have to do, you know, figure out how to fix that. But if you're already going to do details later, it's not like you have to stress out too much about it. And then get my grass line, sort of. This is where I have a very good tendency of losing my only one and only line. And by the way, some of these trees are forward and some are backwards. But the overall sense of that line should be kind of straight across. And even though we, if you know anything about land, you know that if there's trees there, there's probably water there. And if there's water there and it's a row of trees, it's probably a creek. And if there's a creek there, it goes downhill. So even though we know that, if you put that in strictly the same way on your painting a lot of people will have a hard time when it's hanging on the wall because it'll be like looking like it's going downhill you know you, you don't want people jumping up and trying to fix the paint and it's not the paint it's you know it's built in so you don't like that okay and now I'm gonna hit these trees just for fun I'm going to see if I can't get it so that I, when I come back here, I want to make sure I uh, have a map. More than anything else right now, I mean, I like to get the colors in there. You can see they changed a lot already, but I want to get, you know, the right height for the trees. If they're not tall enough, they don't look right. And it's really, really, really easy to lose track of those kind of details. And part of it is, of course, is probably this process by having to put so many colors down but you know in the end that's just one of the problems every every way has a problem or two I'm sure I 
And I have a few coming up here. Um, they got kind of light, but oh well. And then I can come across this guy. And now I have a choice to make. I have cattle in this painting. I can decide right now if this is if I want to just finish it out as a landscape or put the cows in. And when you put these cows in, they're really small. I'm thinking that if that I have time to think that through later, like when I come back and do the final um, details. I can put some in. I can do that. I have a barn and everything. But you know, sometimes it's just as nice to have just a landscape. And part of that is it looks like you're out there in the wilderness. So I'm, I haven't decided on that quite yet. So let's see. The final thing is going to be to, I'm going to take a sable brush and I'm going to go back and I'm going to kind of go by the edges. Now I have to have a uh, towel in my hand, a little tissue in my hand, and do that. I have a little bit of glare from this light up here, but it should be okay. And what I'm trying to do is make sure that I have full coverage, and if I stick with the edges and I don't just go, Rrr, you know, that's not what you want to do at all, because you know, by this point, you have what looks like brush strokes already. So what you're doing is you're actually just calming down some of them. And I think that's works really nice. And you want to make sure you go this sideways, this way. You don't want it all to go in exactly the same direction because um, otherwise it doesn't have a soft look to it. You want to make sure you're not leaving any inadvertent lines as you go and I think what you're doing is you're sticking with a general like if you're going with the dark colors put the dark colors and then come back and get the lights if you want to you can also go by section because you know what you've got a license you can do whatever you want <laughs> but that's what I do is I, I just want to I just want to tap it in and get it to be calm this this even in this sky part here some people make them make the skies really smooth and I think it's a painting so to me it's like I want to see a little variation I have a little bit of stroke still showing yeah so that's really cool the different colors shine through that's what I like about it so I've got a little green a little turquoise up in this blue up here and that makes it look kind of sparkly Here's what's something that's funny. If you have a spot that is any size at all and is only one color, e even if it's a mixed color, you, you know, I mean like if you mix a color all the way to it's just one, it's just a brand new color, but it's one color, you will make it look flat. Like this little spot here might be too big to um, leave it that way because that one color will zing up there. Your eye's going to look and it's, it's going to look flat. And almost nothing that you see in your daily life is flat. So, you know, the whole thing about uh, you know, what color is that? There's no one color. That's the whole point. So I'm, all I'm doing here is I'm going into the darkers, trying to leave them sparkly, because that's we need that. We want that. A lot of times I am just to get be a little ahead of myself. I get this part done and then I'll probably bring it into the other room which has a north window. The north light is really a shadowy light so if you're in the southern hemisphere it's the south light. It, it, any weird spots just putting it in a different environment and walking in there and seeing the colors a little differently is, is going to identify those spots that need to be brushed a little bit more. If you brush too much more, you know, you, 
you're sort of starting over. <laughs> okay. Uh, I can stick with my dark on dark. And I want to make sure I keep some of these greens in there. Just edges. Remind yourself if you have to. Stick with the edges. By, create, by just kind of working these edges, I create some exciting areas, I think, in the painting. So, you, you know, I don't have to get it finished as I go. I can pop it over here, I can pop it over there, and eventually you're working your way uh, to getting it to looking dynamic and yet sort of finished. And I come down in here. And this is that part where you can you can pull it down some of this white and that will blend it without losing the excitement. And speaking of day just like this one, it's that's what it is today. So there's a lot of thunder now. It's, makes my dog crazy. And it's neat because by adding colors that you don't imagine into the sky, they're there. You know, you've got sunlight, if it's daytime, you've got sunlight and it's going to be a lot more colorful than you in your mind you've thought you know so if you put in those colors and you accentuate them to some degree they don't have to be you know grass green but just a hint of that kind of rounds those colors out and makes it look somehow more dynamic and yet more realistic which is kind of antithetical but I think it looks, for me personally, just I'll, I'll hang these up eventually and just enjoy them for a while to see if they're, you know, if they're quite right. And it's fun to look at them when they're a little more dynamic, in my opinion. And see, if you get too much over blending, then you're going to have to fix that, like this guy. So I can go down into this dark and put some dark back in. I can, but wipe it off because you don't want to put white back down in there if you don't have to. The world is way more colorful than we're really kind of taught to buy into. So don't be afraid to put in some colors. Make sure you have some neutrals though. And it will look like real life, you know. It'll play that way, but it'll be a little more exciting to look at every day. Also, one of the things that happens is when you put this in a house or a place that has a window, and uh, depending on the time of day, if the light changes, the whole thing might just, as I call it, bloom out, meaning it could be like anything that's got a, a, a kind of a, color that's sort of like this adobe here. It's almost a pinkish yellowish color. It'll pick up like the time of day at the very end of the night when or just before nighttime when the color comes ripping across the plains as you will. The golden hour. Those paintings will just brighten up like you cannot believe. So that's um, magical. And I find that like a print won't do it near the same way. The print is flat, you know, the, the actual paint itself will pick up some of the colors that change all day long because it's got a little texture to it. I got this up here. I'm going to set this up so I can either, if I want to add that mountain in there, I can or I don't have to. There's a mountain up here in the picture, but I don't have to do, you know, I got a license, I don't have to do anything. 
it's more like how is it going to play as far as the design and I'm going to set it up so it's easy to do it if I want to do it. I'm trying to be careful of these whites. I don't want to get I don't want to get a milky blue color. I want to have a good blue and a good white. So I want to make sure I wipe my brush off after every stroke. I get back over here. I haven't finished this. That's uh, sort of a random way of doing things. But I just have to make sure I get the whole thing by the end. So it doesn't matter if I start here, go here, go here, as long as I don't leave a big part out of it. So and that's going to take a little bit of looking at it, make sure that it's correct. Now, these clouds have to kind of go in their direction. And so if I set it down at the bottom like in the blue and then just pull up barely I can get a little bit of character see that so I'm putting in the blue and I'm I'm touching that white but not for the purpose of blending but for getting the edge to just to get the direction and so which goes over the top which comes up from the bottom and these light colors really if you get the you know a little bit of um, finesse to them they're going to play really nice One of the things about clouds is they have to have, they take up volume, you know, they're in the air, they, they have volume, but they have most of the time, in my experience anyway, they have like soft at the, at portions of the edge. You know, may look kind of bold, like up here it looks really bold, but you know, where it meets the other clouds, it typically has a little bit of softness to it. And if you have a glob there, yeah, it can play, it can play, but it may not be uh, as realistic. And so the brush really does help if you do it correctly to make your clouds look fairly realistic. Yeah, you want to have some, some strokes to give it some finesse or some, you know, some excitement. But you also want to make sure that you have the right spots have to have the smoothness to them. So on my mountains, you know, I just have to touch them here and there. And, you know, the strokes don't have to be perfect. And I think it plays a lot more like real life. off here. So if I'm in the distance and if I can do it <laughs> uh, and I just lightly go over the where the edges meet I can get a nice soft line to that and then it looks like you know the fields that are out there. Now, if I'm, if I go crazy, then, <laughs> right. okay, so for my mountains and everything, if I just go light brush stroke between the two colors, or just barely over, just very lightly, it will, yeah, I'm going to put a little of this down in here. 
it'll look soft and you know correct and I can actually come up here if I want to just so I got a little bit different look than I wanted over here I'll take a little of this white and uh, swirl them up there okay so I'm going down into this land part it's the same exact thing I want to go really light over it and get my edges of these um, straightaways now the tops would be you know over here the tops are going to be like foliage so if you if you start at the bottoms and get your lines and just a little little chips you know just a little a little bit of a line there then you're going to end up it's gonna it's gonna look a little bit more like foliage because that what's at the bottom is uh, shadows so you know again we're setting this up for the next session Just getting everything in the right spot the best you can will save you so much time um, next time. And you don't want any globs because then you have to fight globs when you come back. So it shouldn't be smooth smooth but it should be as finished as you can get it without leaving artificial globs yeah, that you're going to have to fight later. And if you get in a tough spot, you're better off to, you know, aim towards making it smoother if you have to. But literally, if you can f make it so it's finished in the one session, you're going to be way ahead. I kind of lost my green. This is green now. All I have to do is brush over it and it dulls down. So now I'm in this, this brighter green, and I'm going to bring it up a little bit into some of this shadowy area. And what that does is it sort of camouflages my line. Like I need a line that's going to be not at, a, at an obvious angle so that it hangs on the wall, like I mentioned before. But I also need a... You know, if it's too straight, it doesn't even really look natural. So I can bring this green up into these trees here. And then I'm going to come back on this guy. It sort of looks pink compared to the other. And I'm blocking in my area here. So when I come back... Down in here, you can literally put in some, you know, ups and downs a little bit, and that will look like grass. So that is a good way to leave it. When you come back in, you're going to be putting in some shadowy areas in there. But I'm not, I'm not too worried right now about the foliage because it, when you come back in the best way to get that in my opinion is probably for me most of the time is to use a uh, painting knife that is really good for the details so I'm just tapping it down from back to front and you know if it was really if this bottom looked really finished which I don't think it does yet I could sign it even right now and then I don't have to worry about that when I come back but I'm not doing that because it's not that far okay now that's pretty good for me for the first layer and I'm going to Probably, like I said, I'm going to take it out into the other room and really take a once-over on it and see, and then go from there. So, uh, catch you next time. 
Today we're going to be starting to work on finishing out our piece. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is figure out what's our plan of attack to finishing this painting off. So we want to do a quick critique to see two things. What do we like? Those are the things we're going to try to keep. And two, what do we need to change? So the things that are uh, missing, mistakes, adjustments needed, detail added, all of those things. So in this particular piece, the things that I like are, especially the, the colors are very dramatic. It's got a very good feel to it. There are a lot of colors in the clouds and they go with the colors in the bottom. And it, it's, it's very dynamic. Things that I would like to adjust have a lot to do with the ground, which is it's not finished out yet. But there is a mountain in the back above the dark mountains towards the right that I need to kind of put it back in because it doesn't show up very good right now. Also there's a side, the, the hill that comes off to the, the right down that's kind of a tannish color. That doesn't look quite right to me. And then of course then there's the filling in the details, but a couple things that are missing that we really think make this piece look very Montana-like is there's a few buildings in the trees and there's some cows in the front. So I'm going to start with the ground, that's my plan, start with the ground and go from the back of the scene towards the grasses. And then after that's done, I'm going to finish out the clouds. That's the last step. So. Let's get started. What we're doing here with our paint is we make sure that we take and wipe off all of the extra skin. And then you can see that what I've done is I've taken every color and I have just rub it on the palette so that it's available for me when I want to start to paint. I've included all the colors from here down are the colors that I've already used and the top two rows are the colors I haven't used yet. So the first thing I want to do is I want to look at my reference picture and take a look at that mountain in the background. So what I'm going to try to do here is see if I can find a, a combination of colors that will actually work well to match up. I'm going to take some of this. Okay, so I have those kind of combinations. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this darker, if I can get it to come on here. I'm going to take a, it's going to be dark going on, but I'm just going to draw this back in a little bit. I, it doesn't take very much dark, so I don't have to fill it all in like a big crayon or anything. I can just kind of make my marks and come over here. That mountain range in the back there, we call it the tobacco roots, and it's it's very large mountains. It, they don't look as large from my house <laughs> because I have these other hills in the front, and they're very many miles away. So. I'm going to stick that on there and maybe make a little more of this here so I can, you know, I'm going to move this up so you can see better. Okay, so I took that color, I took this color, I took this color, and then I took another one of those and if I mix those together, that is where I can get um, kind of a general color. So I'm going to take that, that one and I'm going to take this guy next and kind of hit that dark a little bit so that it starts to blend down. I'm not going to worry a ton about those the snow quite yet because I need to just get my colors on there. So I'm going to take this next one right here 
and I'm going to come back in now. And it got very light. It was a little lighter than I thought it should be. But I got a base of paint down, so I think that's uh, a good place to start. And go go back, go back to my darker color and come back in on top of that now. And that's building up enough paint so that it'll it'll slide easily enough and start doing its own mixing which is the cool part and there's a couple guys over here now I think I'll come back in just a little bit and see if I now they have a little bit more blue in there. Now if you add the blue to it, it, it looks a little bit blue, it will actually make those mountains look like they're farther in the distance. They have to be lighter and they have to be kind of duller and probably a little more blue and that's what makes them look like they're in the distance. So now I'm going to take, oh my gosh, um, when you look at the snow it's not white at all it's not white white at all so I'm going to take something that's well let's see if I can so it's like a, a light lavender color and I'm going to see if I can just make little it doesn't have to be drawn in perfectly it just has to be sort of a an essence, the essence of snow, and kind of where is it coming down, and then bring that across. That's kind of nice. Bring it across, and I'm trying to get a little bit of direction to where the snow is. Like it'll have big slopes. These mountains have big slopes, and so the when the snow is on there, as it melts, you can see the land that comes up between the, the snow. So um, you want to give it a little bit of direction. Now I'm going to just show you what I'm going to do with this knife. Now I have several different colors here that I'm mixing together and a lot of times that's exactly how I go. I, I use the individual colors to start with and then I can mix them together and I might just mix it very smoothly together make one color or I can take and I'm holding it sort of bringing it straight down and hitting the back side and I'll have all the colors in there so I have put down a base of paint for this mountains here and I want to see if I can add in a more relevant color than just the colors separately and I think that's going to work pretty good. So I'm just go just slide it across and then I let it blend when it gets onto the canvas and I wanted to show you that because I'm going to probably turn off the palette. I just wanted to show you the technique for sure and whenever I run out of color I just mix a little more or rub a little more off there finish that guy. Okay, so that's that particular color. I mean that's the technique. I'm going to tap in some of this. So we got the color on and then we're tapping it in and then we're going to take a brush to it and sort of get this colors in the right direction. I am kind of going over this blue mountains here a little bit and that's okay because we can come back in and do a couple things we could wipe it off if we want to we could reapply that front paint on there so 
this guy actually comes down here. There's like misty, misty or foggy or snowing. <laughs> it's like probably misty. All right, now I'm going to take a brush to this now and see. Oh, probably a, f uh, probably a little bit stiffer brush. And my goal here is to try to get the outside edge to be, it can be a little mysterious. It doesn't have to be super straight edge. It can be a little mysterious because it's a cloud really in the background. So I'm going to take this up here and then I'm getting my edge of my cloud and also at the same time kind of calming down and mixing together some of these other colors in there. And I want to be a little bit careful too. I don't want to go crazy because I want to keep these the clouds are what I like and want to keep. So I'm going to try my best to not disturb everything. Just kind of blend it in and give it that really pretty mysterious colors and textures of faraway mountains. It's And anything, okay, so so let's talk that the anything that's in the far away distance, it's going to be a little bit bluer because those are the uh, the rays of the colors that are the longest. And so they they tend to that's why mountains look blue is because you can see those colors farther away. So it has to have a little bit of a blueness. They also tend to be a little bit more neutralized. So a little less color, a little more neutralized. And so the texture also, you know, some texture in there is beautiful as far as painting goes. But as far as, you know, what you're seeing, the texture in the front is what sets it towards you and getting rid of some of that texture in the back gives it a more realistic view so it's it's um trying to figure out how much to leave in and how much to not leave in so we'll keep going across and just lightly tap the edge of the top there taking a certain amount of artistic license with these mountains and I can come in I got a few way over here way over here and I can make you know it's sort of like I go in I go across and I get the look and then I check it out and then I can change it again if I need to so if you try to kind of blend it in a slower on your first pass and less is more kind of a thing and then if you need to do more to it then you can come back in and you'll save yourself a ton of time if you do that okay so they're kind of cool I can put in a little bit more of the snow colors In fact, uh, if I want to get a good amount of paint on there, probably have to start with my knife and then kind of just touch it to here and just drag it down a little bit. Oops. And then you say, oops. So. Now when you start from the back to the front, a lot of times the detail that you keep there is going to look a little bit bold, but by the time you finish the front out, I guarantee you that it will look correct because you're going to really put detail in down here. So and these are kind of darker, so I don't need as much of this but it still has some in there so and a little bit up in here and 
Some of this is looking too obvious and then other parts not obvious enough. So you just back and forth it until you have it figured out. The snow goes, you know, a lot of times it melts and there may be bald spots at the top of the mountain, but fairly close to the top is where the bulk of the snow is. If you see like light on here, then you want to get that now if you can. So there's a light that's like the, the clouds over here are lighter and then they're kind of in the shadows over here. So if you get the detail in right now, then you don't have to go back. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of have come to the conclusion that it's really easy to end up accidentally repainting the whole piece because I don't know because you make too many adjustments all the time you know getting that paint in there you can always adjust it later but if you leave it looking kind of fresh then you're going to be happy with that later and you won't, might not notice it until you get some of this in here until you know you're done with the foreground or you're done with the piece and you have a chance to sit back and think about it that usually is what happens to me so if you stop a little ahead of yourself before you think it's perfect then come back you can fix it it's just a process I think the, a lot of artists use that process too so This is a little bit obnoxious over here. Okay, so one of the things I can do now to get my edge on there, on this top a little bit nicer is I have a softer brush here and I'm just, now this up here is dry and I'm just pulling it across trying not to lose all my character. You want to keep some of that character. But you also want it to be refined looking. Just a tap. Pull it down. And over here too. Okay, and this guy is kind of, he kind of got a little taller there than I really wanted. You can, this is a cool thing you can do. You can take a little bit of tissue and make sure I'm in the right spot and just wipe it off. If you really need to get the color, then you can come back in with a clean brush and take your gamsol on your brush and just run it over. Remember we had let this paint on the first layer dry to the touch. So you can come back in and pull some of that off. This is a lot. I'm going to go back to my softer brush, I guess. Really. So, as it's in the shadowy area, it doesn't have as much detail so the detail over here is actually has a couple of crisp edges in there little dots or whatever and over here it can be a little bit less because it's in the shadowy area 
this direction kind of goes like this. Now, in the reference picture, the clouds that go just above this ridge here are a little bit lighter right where it meets the mountains. And so we'll be defining that again when we get down to our snowy area. I mean, our snow, to our sky area. When we do the sky, that'll take care of some of that. So. Uh, take a little of that out of there. And um, this guy. Now we're getting down here to where it meets the, the next mountains that came forward. So what do we care about that? <laughs> we care a ton. No. If we've got a decent enough color, what we can do is to keep doing our little trick and I'm going to use the stiffer brush to do it because it's cleaner edges. But I'm going to probably come back in here, see if this will work, and bring back this blue that's in the foreground. And if I can get enough of the other color off of there to get a nice edge, then I don't have to do anything more to it, just kind of clean it up. So I got way down in here, didn't need that. So over time I've decided that when you're doing this back and forth, the least that you have to do to change something is usually leaves the piece looking a little bit cleaner. Otherwise you end up kind of repainting and repainting and repainting and it's tedious and you wonder why did I go to all the trouble to get such nice colors to begin with if I'm just going to cover them up. So. But like everything, it's kind of a process. This got nice and gooped up. Okay. So what I probably need to do, make sure you step back a little, check, make sure that you're not leaving edges that are obnoxious. Now I think that that'll probably actually play okay. So let's look at adding in just a little touch of the darker here just to kind of, okay I'm going to get this edge now in my opinion and other people might think so too, I don't know. If you get the kind of the darker um, outline up at the top it's kind of a, it's still again a give and a take and then bring it down, it has a tendency of, of making a definition between that farthest mountains and this middle ground. So you're trying to get an edge to it, but it's also far away so you don't want to get too wrapped up in that. 
as it goes down off the mountain, a lot of times you get a little dark spot here, a little dark spot there. And if you put that in, it makes it look a lot more realistic. And he comes across. And it makes it really easy to adjust that part. So I have to make sure that I have a good definition, but I don't want to leave too big of a gap, neither. So like this guy, I'm going to just pull him down a little so that he meets up with this mountain. And you can do kind of, now that you have a little bit of paint on there, you can do a little wet on wet. It's a very dark blue, which is gorgeous, obviously, but it's also, by going with a dark color, it brings it forward, and that's really good if all you're doing is looking at the two sets of mountains, but I'm probably going to have to go over this with a slightly lighter blue also, because I want it to go back far enough. Also, I want to make sure that I get this, I have to get my mountain line down far enough on this, this tan color so that the, the mountains have their own, you know, height is they have to have the right height to them. So I'm going to come in and just kind of mess around with this directions a little bit. And the other question I had had to do with this little piece up here where I can add in a little of this dark and that'll shorten that. So it looks like it goes towards the front. It's on a hill and mountain that's a little bit towards the front, but it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb if you just put a little bit of that paint on there so that it looks like it all goes with each other. I'm going to have to kind of stand back a little bit, make sure I get my line at the bottom pretty close to right, and over here, and then kind of over here, and then just tap it together. You know, the, the strokes up and down help to just make it look a little bit, has a little bit of texture to it. We like that. I like that. <laughs> and over here, and see if I can get it now. The thing that I have to really make sure to do when I step back is check to see if my lines are right. Now I'm going to come back in up here and take that same color and try to you know, make sure that you've got the right feel to the whole thing. See I make it a little darker at the edge there and then it defines it and a little bit up there and it defines it and okay. in the meantime I kind of didn't do myself any big favors over here so I'm gonna go back tap that in get a lighter color get a little snow on there get out of the way. So I'm going to take a little bit of like this this turquoise maybe just a little bit and see what it does. Okay that is nice so I'm going to take it at the kind of in the 
Okay, so when I do the turquoise in this blue, it almost gives it the sense that there are some trees in there because it's a little bit greener, slightly greener than this dark blue I had on here before. So it, it really makes it pop and stand out. Now you can remember that if you decide later on after this next coat's dry that you need to do some more adjusting, it you know, it's the same exact process. So once you learn this, it's easy to just keep doing it. And it's an awfully pretty turquoisey color. And I don't know, these, these background mountains kind of have it in there too. So that's good to know. Let's build that in just a little bit. So in certain ways, like in our first layer, I put in a whole bunch of colors and I made sure that that color went everywhere. It's a little bit the same what I'm doing right now is I'm building that base and then as I go I want to make sure that it has some continuity from the back to the front and, the, and all the way around. So I'm building some of that in right here. And I don't, you know, I don't have, um, I, I develop this plan as I go a lot of times. So suddenly it occurs to me, oh yeah, this would look better with a little bit of this other color in here, and that's how I come to that. It isn't like I had that figured out to begin with perfectly. So that's part of your painting process. It just sort of develops itself. And... Maybe just light going over of this. Get my edges lost again. So I'm going to hit it here and there. And I'm using a real almost ultramarine blue right here and just pop it in here and there. Okay, so you got a turquoise which pulls it forward and then you have a ultramarine blue which is got a little bit of a reddish hint to it and that will set it back a little bit actually because the you know the if you recall it the um, the depth comes from what colors disappear so first so you've got the yellow everything is strong in the front then the yellow dissipates first then the red then the green the blue well green's got a blue and a, and a yellow so it would only stand to reason that a blue that has a little more red in, or red in it um, it would f f push it back a little. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. I am going to take a little bit of this. Okay, light blue. And kind of just tap that in. Just because it's so dark. And one of the things about these dark colors, a lot of times they'll they'll stay dark after it cures out and the other colors 
may or may not <laughs> be so quite so dark. So I think a little definition there. Now you don't need to have like a absolutely straight line. You can put kind of a dash pattern in and the eyeballs will do the rest of the work for you. And I'm talking about the line of these mountains here. Okay, so I am probably need that to be a little bit more gray. So I'll mix it with the gray. Try to get my line in here. Um, let's see if I can. Okay. Now, this, if I make this line go a little bit up this little hill here, it will give you the sense of that hill the way it was but without it being so garish and bright. So my, my sunlight is kind of ripping across the very edges of that. And it's a little bit more muted as you come forward. But I have a certain amount of spots where the light is, it's that time of day where it's kind of coming across the valley. And so I'm kind of hitting between these trees a little bit. And then way over here, it's got a little bit extra, which is neat. So I can So I can go to the line, kind of go back and forth, and then um, pop it down a little bit. And what that does is it makes a nice line at the top, and the popping down just sort of um, gives it a gradated look. Now, my little friend over here, he needs a little bit of a dark purple. So I'm going to mix it with the, this really dark blue I had, and that gives me the continuity, but it also gives me a duller, darker purple. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, let's see if that will fly. Okay, so there we go. And it wants to be down in here a little bit too. So I'm going to take my first, I can tap that in a little, and then that. And then just kind of come across okay now this uh let's see here So I have a, a, 
a little purple that I'm going to add in down here and in here and I can actually really dull down this yellowish color into a more of a gray with that purple because after all it is a yellowish color so you can do that now I'm going to add a little more of this blue into this so you know one of the things I like to talk about of course is that almost every color has more than one color in it so if it looks too if you go oh that's purple <laughs> then you need to add something else into it so I'm adding a little bit of this dark blue again and now I just have to work this pattern take a little bit of this yellow and it can actually go with the green I think so let's try that that's better so I can dull down this yellow which is really like a tan and get the green in there and everything and that sets it up it to be like this yellow like I say it's 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 the color that dissipates first so even though you see that yellow in there if you put the green in there it add, automatically adds a blue to it so and a little purple down at the bottom and that's what um, gives it that sense of it's going back I don't know what that is right there so I'm gonna okay so I want to get a little more of that green in here and part of the reason you got to keep doing that is because you're going to also have trees in front I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just put in some purples down at the bottom and then I'll hit it with the green. So I have, um, I started that over here. I need to finish it all the way across so it looks like a, a field. This yellow is far in the distance so it can be, it can afford to be kind of uh, less detail you don't need to put in a whole lot of detail most of these fields that are that far back they just look like stripes you don't want to put in a whole lot of detail even if your camera picks it up you know the camera is actually not an eyeball so because it picks up way more detail than the eyes so if you put the detail in back there it won't look right to the person as much it won't be as impactful and it will look like everything is moving towards you uh, visually too fast so you don't want that all I'm really doing is setting the stage for the foliage to start coming from the trees and then eventually the grasses Now I want to take a smaller brush and kind of, this is dry up here so I can put my hand there. But I want to come back in and just get that top line. Um, just kind of brush the very tip of the top lines. If you don't do that it's going to look like it's too much detail because it's got little dots pattern on there so I don't want that. So I'm going to push this down a little bit try to keep my line a little bit. Now these fields they have a drop to them in real life but again you know in, in the design of this it's going to be kind of stripy. So if you get too crazy, it, it'll look like it's the painting isn't hanging right. Okay. All right. 
Now I can take and just go over it very lightly. And it'll kind of give that a little finished look to it. All right, now if I step back a little. So I want to check it. I put my hand out at the bottom of a piece and then I can check where it's going. And it's pretty good except it's a little high up here. So there you go. Okay, so now we're setting ourselves up pretty good. Uh, some of this is needs a little bit of a direction. I'm going to start my tree line. And I want to get really, really dark colors. And I want I need light colors too, but really dark colors. So I'm going to pick a couple of these colors to mix together. So I got a really dark green. I take my cad maroon, which is a red. And you, you'll remember that green and red dull each other down. I have a really dark brown. And I definitely want to have like a purple. I could put black in there if I wanted to, but you don't need to. So I'm going to go back to my method of just scooping in each of these colors. I don't have to mix them. I need to be smooth enough. And it comes out almost as a black and it's real, real dark. So we're hitting these shadowy areas first. Um, all along the way. And I don't have to mix it as one color. I can mix just a hint of each of those colors and by the time you get it put on there it does its own mixing only it has little bits and pieces of each of those colors. So it looks cool. All right. Now I'm coming to a place here where I have to make a decision about adding this house I actually wouldn't have to add the house, right? But I still want to add the cattle, so I have to really watch my picture and make sure I'm saving room for that. I could put the house in too, though. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know. I'm going to come up here. Now this has a bunch of trees up in here. I don't have to make them huge to the edge, because, but it has to go up to high enough on these background mountains so that it makes sense. And now see what's going to happen is is that you can frame this thing with either a frames that go over the top by a quarter of an inch like a regular kind of frame or with a floater frame which doesn't even go over the the top of the painting Better get my underline here and uh, why I say that is because you got this big old tree way over here <laughs> and you actually have one over here too so it it balances itself out pretty good I always think about things like that because I've done enough paintings to and had to go to the framing shop so that I find out when I made a mistake is you know you're already late on that mistake and so if you're not careful like a, f a floater frame is neat in the sense that it will be very forgiving as far as how you're painting you know, you can go all the way to the edge and it's forgiving that way. If you make it too small, you put it, put the frame on there. It doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't cover anything important up like your signature. And this piece is very large. It's a 16 by 20, so it's relatively large. So the signature shouldn't get covered up anyway. But on a very small piece, it's happened to me. 
And I'm like, oh no. So anyway, if, if you don't ever cover up the entire surface, you're, it's forgiving that way. Now let's just do a, a quick double take, double check and make sure that we have um, this line pretty close. So again, I'm kind of going to the bottom of it. Now you've got trees that are actually on a crick, so some are forward and some are back. But I, you know, now is the time to find that line if you're going to do it, because otherwise you're going to end up with just a whole bunch of crazy. <laughs> okay, now we'll start over here. Maybe put in this tree. Now, the left-hand side is the shady side. But, you know, you, you can put this in and you're going to cover it up with the lighter colors anyway. And then we have... This guy comes way kind of up here. And it has a little friend over here. Uh, these palette knives, I, I always use this little tiny one. Now there's a little bit of darkness that's going on back here. That's a, in the distance. That has a little more purple in it. Maybe I'll just I'll honor that by putting in a little purple. Maybe even put in a little bit lighter in there too. Just so it... goes back. And it goes, and I got that one in there. That goes, you know, that has a lot to do with the fields in this area. So I'm taking this little line back here. Just going back and forth across and then down. Back and forth across and down. Now that mixing a little bit with this field in the back. So it's lightening it up. Making it a little different than the field in the front. There's a little bit of a tree line even down in here. like there's a shadow line that goes there and so there's a green in that field and I'm just putting it right on top of this dull color that we just put on there which sort of looks a little bit dark purpley and then we're going to take a brighter green This is a bright field that's coming up behind these trees. So I'm going to stick that in first here before I do all the rest of these trees.
I have sort of a light bluish green that I can add to that. That'll kind of push it all back. Now we can kind of go back to getting this the darks back into our cloud or cloud, into our trees there. And stick a good tree up in here. He's got a lot of red on there for some reason. Now, this group of trees way over here it goes really high. So I'm going to tap in a little towards the top and see if I can't get it to look tree like from the very beginning. That would be nice. I'm kind of leaving this paint on a little bit it's thick because it's wet actually behind there and we're still wet on um, behind so it's wet on wet you can put it down and even scratch in a couple of areas that make it look like you can see through the, the leaves now we're going to have lighter colors uh, uh, to, for the highlights of these trees so we're just looking at the shadowy areas if we can
I'm sort of making an executive decision here. There's a couple of buildings in there. I'm not putting the buildings in there. I think I might uh, have to do cows though. <laughs> That's coming up. And you see I have this line that I had here, but I'm making it kind of a variation so that the balance of it is kind of cutting across, I don't know, so it, it looks like it's, you know, on a crick and all. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I have this dark green, obviously. I am going to see if I can start adding in a little bit of the highlights now. Let's start somewhere, anywhere. Okay, that's really close to that other color, so I need to do something a little different here. So I'm going to put in this, it's um, a kind of a dull color actually when you look at it when it's all in the, two, in, in the stick. It's kind of a dark, dull color, but it has a little bit of yellow into it. It's not the brightest color I plan to use necessarily, but it does set up some of the, the light that's coming onto these bushes a little bit. By kind of picking a color that's bright enough, but still a little bit on the duller side, it gives me enough room to put in a, a much brighter color after that. So it actually lets me go darker or lighter either way. But it does give it a sense of light, which is something we like, we wanted. Now we're going to try a much brighter green. Just see, just touch it up here and touch it up there and uh, see what we end up with here. I'm getting kind of a good globs on here and I'm just kind of taking it just over the top and then kind of uh, screwing it 
scraping it here and there, I guess, to get that texture on there. And it works because this other paint that we have behind there is still wet. So it works a little differently if it was dry. So a couple things I want to make sure that I have some coming down to the bottom of this shadow area just here and there. It looks a little more realistic and then the other thing is is on the edges I can still use the same color but when it gets really close to the edge you know I can mute it down a little bit by just taking some off. That keeps you from going out of the painting a little bit. Okay so that it looks like a bunch of crazy. <laughs> Maybe it's going to be crazy. Now I'm going to take my this kind of green. It's a little bit bluer and I'm just going to hit the grasses just underneath and maybe I have to add it together with a another green. So what I'm trying to do is I, I don't want to compete too much with these trees. I just want to get in a little bit of a lighter green that's maybe a little bit bluer. So I need to add a little bit more of this bluer. And I don't need to fill in every spot necessarily. So I, I put it down and I kind of push it in. So I touch it, push it, and then that gets a little bit of that paint on there. And so uh, from my first coat, I still have some of a turquoisey color there. So it, I don't need to cover the whole first layer up there necessarily, but I need to make it look like it's, you know, in the right spot. And I'm just touching in all these different greens. So, so when you do that to the shadowy area, it almost makes it look like there's grass growing in that shadow, right in the front of that shadow area. So it looks natural. It doesn't have a super grassy feel to it necessarily, but because it's kind of in the distance, but it just gives the essence of that. It's, a, it's going to be a real win if you can walk away from this tree line and not have, have to do too much adjusting the next time. see if I can work this color. Okay, so this is sort of a golden green and I have a couple of these that are really neat. Let's try this one. So I'm kind of making it so that I can put in a little bit of darkers but it won't take away from my grasses in the back. It just adds in a goldeny, darker color so that it looks like it's grass. I'll take this bright green and then that one and see what I get here.
a nice sort of a beigey pink. So what I have here is uh, mixing some of this cad maroon with the adobe and that makes sort of a pinky color and I'm going to just make kind of a line of that. Some of the grasses that we have end up heading out with kind of pink pink it's like cheat grass or something I think they call it ends up being kind of pinky and you can put a little pop here and there towards the back too so that it, it just um, looks like it's part of the field when you go back towards the back all you have to do is just touch it in and to the front you can bring it down a little bit because as you get closer those grasses look a little taller but in the very back they you add a sparkle, but that's all you need to add. Now even on the sides you need a little bit less of it, so of course that, that really globs in. <laughs> but you you don't need it to go like see I'm trying to get a hit a vignette here. So I don't really want to leave it looking awkward, but I need it to be not drawing attention out of there. Okay, now I have I have a decision to make, and that is whether to put the cattle in. And I think I'm going to try it anyway. Now these are going to just look like dots because they're tiny. So let's just uh, see what we can do here. Now, the secret to this, I think, is to get in a general shape. And if you need to come back and reinforce those colors when it's a little drier, that'll work. But you want to make them somewhat the right size, and you want to make them the right shape, the right size. And all of these cattle are actually... You know, far away from me too so now these are black cattle you can't tell from this distance but uh, if they were up closer you would see a lot of different colors in the hair because of reflection so I don't even use a black to get them but I I could if I wanted to I guess I'll have their heads down eaten away a couple biggers. back there. Now if you can get the outside edges to be pretty close, that's really going to make it easier for you when you come back in and reinforce the color. You just use the dark color. You don't have to add in all the green and everything like that. So. If I can make this believable enough to just finish off the next time. 
that's kind of what I'm headed for. Okay, so they look like kind of blobs, but they'll play really nice. Now, I think I just need to uh, come in with more of this. Um, I'm just going to stick with this red and the tan, but I'm going to lighten this up under here. So I'm going with a lot more of the, well, it's not tan, it's called uh, Adobe. So I want to, this is my line. This is my one really important line here. But I, I definitely want to measure it and check it and make sure. Before I go right into that dark shady area in the front, I have to really make sure I know where I'm at. So let's check it. Okay, so about an inch and a half. Not too bad. So I got cad maroon, I have a dark blue, I have a dark brown, a dark purple. I think it's called azure blue. I can keep these colors coming in here. And I can even start with a couple and then add another pairing. So this one is a little bit of the azure and like a thallow. Now that makes it look crazy, but I'm just laying in a little bit so I can get it to be kind of wet again. And it's pretty. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking, well, geez, I should probably just tap in here and there with the same color because then I have that continuity I'm always looking for. So that's a good idea, I think. Not too dissimilar from the, um, the light pink. Put in a little bit of the turquoise. You could probably even add it to this cow. Because, by the way, the cow is underneath the sky, and the sky's got a little bit of that, so. Maybe one of the secrets to doing some of these animals is, is that you want to make sure to add all those colors, or, you know, a good set of those colors, because they have to fit into the, into the environment. Otherwise, they just look like you did a paper doll on oh, trees.
because this is a shadowy area you probably don't have to put in a lot of detail even though it is also so I'm kind of making that uh, more on the designy side maybe and I'm putting it on with this knife because it's more of a hit or miss that if you use the the stick itself and you went across there you it'd be too uniform and you can make all of this stuff be as realistic as you want it to be so it's all up to you if you're going to make it more realistic then you have to really follow principles of where is the detail where does it show up the most in the front or in highlighted areas and uh, you know get small tools get the right size tools maybe it's a better way to say it maybe i'll hit it with this little red here which is that cad maroon again so anyway smaller tools for more details and you know, like any other kind of oil painting or other kind of painting and it, it's it's amazing how versatile this product really is if you can figure out how to make the marks that you're looking for. Now, as you'll see there, because this red is in there, it makes it come forward to some degree. I think it would be nice to have a little bit of more red in these trees. I had a little red here and there that I took out because I thought it was an accident. Now I'm putting it in. Because the thing about trees is, you know, they they have a lot of contrast in there, and so why not put, put it in as red? The thing that I always find for me in, is that a lot of times I will not think about red so much and well, then the painting looks a little flat so if I just put that color in now it may be true that other people might forget a different kind of color and so if you're missing a color your painting is going to look flat in a spot here or there see when we put in those darks we used all the different colors so if you add another like a specific color to it like this one it will go with everything that you put down so far and just kind of tweak it towards that red the red actually is a good color for middle ground and this is sort of these trees here are sort of middle ground Don't forget your cow. We'll put a little bit on this cows too because you know the black color is a really flat color. Even though it's a mixed color here, it ends up feeling really flat and not good. So that made them stand out a little bit more. Okay, next to color is maybe this purple here okay so you know the drill we add in a little purple Okay, so let's see what we have for a dark green here. So all I'm doing is influencing everything with that guy.
So I'm using a dark green and this golden green, and that actually looks a little better to me. Okay, so I'm going to hit this with a maroon and a blue and a few shadows going there. And why the red? Well, because certain times of year, you know, it just gets really dry. And so I need to get my reds down into here again, the pinks and such, a little bit. You know, they're dark though. They're not bright. So now what? Okay. The thing I would do now is I'm going to have to calm down some of these trees a little bit and also probably the grass a little bit because the paint's a little globby and so it's not bad or anything. It's just a little globby. So I'm going to start by maybe tapping here and there. You know, part of that's just the size of the globs. It's probably okay that it has got globs in it. It's just that it's this part of it is in the distance, and so too much globs makes it look forward, too forward. You don't want to lose your color. So as soon as you hit that green, it's going to lighten up. It's going to be the same basic color, but it's going to lighten up. So it's okay. That's okay too. If it dulls down a little bit, it's kind of a one heck of a bright color. But if you get too crazy, you'll lose all of those really great colors you just put in. That's okay if that's what you're looking to do. But if you're not, then slow slow is fast in this case and I like having that texture on those trees too I think that looks cool And if you just make some of these greens a little bit smaller in the shape, they really stand out a lot. Now this grass is up here. I'm going to hit that with a brush, and but I can I can start tapping this down in here. And the reason for that is because the lines are so narrow that my big old finger would probably not be quite right. And now I'm just going to kind of go, just pop it up here and there, pop it up. I do not want to lose my cool colors in this dark grass. And I don't know if you can see them as well as I can see them right here, but there is every kind of colors in there. So I don't want to lose that. I just want to give it sort of a direction. I want to make sure I don't have any funny lines in there and make it look like it's a field of grass. So I'm, I'm really not doing a whole lot of pushing. I'm just tapping it in some places, pushing it a little bit. This little turquoise is kind of cool up at the top. So that is looking kind of cool. So I'm going to just tap in some of these edges on the outside. I kind of just go on the side and I I don't want to lose everything so no even big strokes just tap it right on the side. See I just lost that whole glob there. I'm going to leave a glob there. It 
it's more of a touch than it is a, a stroke in any way. Now you're going on these um, writers, if you tap the bottoms of them first, you might get what you, you're looking for. Tapping the top, I don't know, it just sort of sucks the life out of those leaves a little bit, so. Okay. Now, this is interesting. I don't know, you know, some ways you wonder if you should bother with this, but I'm going to take a bigger brush here and just ever so slightly hit a few spots mostly to get the level of you know in the back here this is a whole field that green part is a whole field in real life and so if you go underneath these bushes just the absolute slightest of touch because if you brush this at all it's going to lose every color it's going to all melt into one so you just want to tap it just to give it a little bit more of a depth by making it a little smoother in the background. And I got this cow here that's wanting to take over. And then I can work my way up towards the front a little bit. That really, I think, you want to leave some chunky spots, but not a lot of chunky spots. You want it to be, you know, to be believable. Okay. Okay. These cows are going to take them down a little bit here. Okay, and then I'm just going to tap that cow. Why am I going to tap that cow? Because I'm pretty sure I'm coming back to it tomorrow or the next day or whatever. And so if I get the ridges of paint out of there, then when I touch that up, it'll be, the paint will go on better. So I'm just making a nice bed for the paint. This guy is kind of bigger. Okay. I gotta, you're gonna have to suspend your disbelief on these cows right now. I'm gonna do a quick little um, green in here. Just to uh, reestablish that grass. Because when I do that cow, I, I don't want to have to go and try to remember what in the world did I just do. So, between now and then, I think at this point, I, I won't waste time showing it, but I'll just put my signature in, probably right down in here. And that way, it's all wet on wet. So... The next time we're going to do the clouds, and then we'll be pretty much done. So, thank you. Okay, today is session number three, and you'll recall in session one we put the initial coat down, and session two we did the land and the cattle, and now in session three we're going to try to finish off this, the sky today. And if we're lucky, we'll be pretty close to done. So the first thing is the same as the first thing we did in session two. We take a look at the piece and we see what needs to be done. And again, the rules apply. Doing less is probably better. So one thing is I'm going to go back to the ground. And the cows need to be tapped in a little bit. They need to have a little bit more darkness to them. And then there's a spot right over kind of to the left on the shadowy area on the very bottom there. 
at the top of it, it sort of looks a little more turquoisey than some of the rest of it. So I have a choice to make there. I can either add turquoise to some of the rest of that grass, or I can tamp out some of the uh, turquoise that is kind of standing out. Now the third thing that I would say is that in the sky, and I'm looking at my reference picture, and there's some places I think the sky is actually not terribly bad in my opinion, but I need to reinforce some of the lighter areas and it's possible I'll have to do something with the darker areas, but probably won't have to do too much with that, I hope. And then there's the back back mountains that I had put in in session two. They need to have a little highlights so that they stand out from the clouds. So I have already set up all my colors. I put sort of the sky colors towards the front Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to tackle this grass. And I think what I'm going to do is put in some more of the turquoise. And I think it's the azure blue and the thalo blue that went together to make the color that I'm talking about. So I take my knife and I'm going to see if I can get that color, which I think is this color. So let's check it. That's kind of cool. about this guy. It's actually a little bit bluer. So what I'm going to do is, is I want to take and make sort of a bowl. Now why I want to do that is, is I want to keep my vignette on the sides and whenever I have clouds and such that come down in the sort of a, a, a co composition that sort of brings you down around, I want to be able to catch you at the bottom so that you can come back up. So if I make it perfectly straight across, it's really hard for the eye to do that. So I'm just going to see if I can't pop in a little bit. And I don't, I'm not going to be crazy. I just want to pop that color in here and there. So I'm going to take, whoopsie daisy. Now it's almost more of a bluish color. Okay. It's awfully pretty though. And you know, it kind of matches up with this sky too, so that's good because that kind of translates from up here to down here a little bit. Now one of the things that's interesting, this, this whole grassy area has dried, so if I get a little bit carried away, which kind of looks like I am, I can, you know, kind of get it in the right location and then come back in and take some out. And I think I did some of that in the second session, so it's a little bit of a repeat. And I'm going to go a little under this signature here. And... way over past, a little bit past this cow, so if I kind of aim a little bit, make sure that I'm not too far off track, so. Okay, and I go a little here. And I don't want to get too close to this bottom at all because what happens at the at, around the edges is if you put kind of a frame that a lot of us are used to that goes over the piece, it's a good quarter of an inch uh, where that frame will cover that piece. So if you get too close to the bottom, it won't create the bowl. It it won't it'll go out of the bottom. We don't really want that neither. So okay, let's see where we're at. Too bad. Oh, above there. Okay, so now we're going to just take and use our finger. I'm going to have a tissue in my hand and I'm going to just tap and kind of tap it up. And you can see that these bright spots dull down just like they should. They shouldn't stand out like a terrible sore thumb or anything uh, because you got a lot to look at up here. You're just trying to 
you know, catch that light. And as we say, you know, the continuity is to keep the colors kind of coming through the piece in their own composition, so. Okay, now we can take a stiffer brush, I think, and see if we can't get a little bit. Just take the, the brightness away from it. So I'm not spreading it all over the place. I'm not covering up the entire piece. I'm just leaving little spots for it to kind of sparkle in there. And add it here and there wherever it's not quite right. And you can put just a touch in the in these corners just a little bit. Now I'm going to show you. I take my tissue, wrap it around my finger, and then just tap it. And if I want to come up a little bit from the bottom up, it will look more like it's coming from grass. And one of the things you can think of when you're at this spot is, is that you actually, you don't have to stick with this at all. You can let it cure out and then come back and adjust it again. If you wanted to do more, you could take some of this golden green color and just kind of hit that in there too. that combination of colors will kind of, I don't know, the word that comes to mind is marry each other. It'll play better if they kind of work together. I'm not trying to get the whole thing wet though. So. Okay. And I just finish that off with a, a tap of this greeny color and okay now I'm going to try for these cows and if you will remember they are kind of a combination of dark colors. So I have a dark purple, I have a red, gr brown, a green, and a blue. And let's see, let me see if I can get that up towards the top tip of this and just tap it right kind of where the belly is. And then kind of go from there. So I just popped him. Um, that seems okay to me. And these colors together, you may recall, kind of makes a, a color that's close to black without being black. I'm going to take a little more. If I make a little bit more, I can maybe get them all done maybe. Okay. Oh, blue. Clean my blue. I just get to touch, touch the top of it. Okay. So I see I made that. I, I Okay, so I'm going to start here. I make this same color. I see I was out of the focus there. So I'm just going to make this really dark color with this dark purple, this dark bluish color, uh, the dark green, and the brown, and the red. And now I have kind of a, a, a blackish color. So I'm going to just hit the tip of that and I'm aiming for the belly. And the 
Yeah, this one's got a little head to it. Maybe a pair of glasses would be good. Okay, now I go to this little one. Make sure I have, um, it's not too globby. in here and a couple of friends over here now you see they don't have any detail at all on them and really when you're driving through you know if you're not a rancher riding your horse through there or your ATV, you might be driving down the highway or whatever and you see them. You don't see all that in detail, so... That guy got a little bit crazy. Okay, so if I wanted to, I could have just taken a very fine brush and just got as much paint on there as you can get it all the way to that tip and then come in and and hit it just in spots so that works good too if you're having trouble with that knife it might be the answer so I'm just trying to give you the illusion of these things and this is my friend that's having his own trouble. He's kind of facing away. You don't want to outline it too much or anything because otherwise it's too much detail. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, I can also take, if I get a little bit too harsh of a line around it, like this guy's a little bit kind of looks like it needs to be softened up around the edges you can do that with your brush too and this has a well it's the bottom of these that are a little bit Not quite right. And His back end doesn't, I don't think it's supposed to be quite so round. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at this sky. And maybe what we'll do is start around those mountains. So, well, the sky part around the mountains is a little bit lighter. And I have some grays here that I could try to see if I can't draw that in a little bit. So... up here 
and meets these mountains down in here. And actually, some of these mountains are behind each other, so I can get a little bit of, I don't know, kind of a misty color by putting this gray over on top of the, well, it'd be the second row of, of those faraway mountains. And comes across. looks like it's snowing actually and comes across so as long as I have this gray in my hand let's keep using that I'm working my way up this piece and it, you can see it almost looks like a different color when it's up against the, this row of colors so that is the optical illusion of color now way over here, what's it look like over here? Oh, it looks kind of like a tan color, so that's all right. Wherever you see any kind of a tan look to it, we'll put that in there. It's all the same basic color. keep track of it I'll put it to the right side or the left side of the color so I can remember which ones I've used let's see how about a light purple this might work so I'm going to see if I can't get get a little variation in that line with this lighter purple and up on here a little bit And I guess the reason I do that is I don't want this final uh, session to be putting on just plain colors in a location. I don't want to cover up a lot of stuff, but if you put a color over the top of stuff, it typically will make it look kind of flat. Just put a little of this in here. Now you are going to ask what about the top yeah what about the top so I'm going to add in a little of this and way up here it looks really like almost pink so that's cool because that's not unrealistic and it kind of goes with so I'm going to kind of en enlarge these lighter areas in here just a little bit and you can see if you look really close if you enlarge your screen you can see that I'm not putting a lot over the top just a tiny bit Otherwise, it'll just cover everything up. Well, you don't want to get too carried away because it's already pretty close, but just enough to kind of bring it forward. One of the things that's really neat I used to like watching, I think his name was Michael Stack. His pieces, those clouds, you know, they showed up big sky and then the clouds come right to you and it was really something that impacted me a lot when I first started and I was trying to figure out how to do that for a long time. And now it's like, so if you keep track of where your colors are going and especially the the colors along with the contrasts you you're going to be able to make it look like it's coming right to you so that's kind of where I got some of my influences to try to get big sky that way and I, I looked his work up long long time ago so there wasn't a lot out there on the internet. Maybe there's more now. So if you wanted to investigate more, you should do that. Okay, now 
put him over here. I'm going to just take these and put them down at the bottom. I'm not sure you can see them, but the reason for that is, is that um, I just want to make sure I keep track of which ones they are. So I'm going to take this little bluer one. This is sort of a muted blue, and I'm going to just come in around some of these purpley colors and just kind of soften the look without taking away from anything we've done so far. And this goes way over to here. And one of the things that's so neat about these sticks is that they will let you put colors next to each other and kind of blend. So you don't have to do all the blending after the fact. You can do it while you're painting. And it's if you like to draw, it's fun. <laughs> if you don't like to draw, maybe not so much fun. And a little in here, a little in here, and I'm going to take in, let me get off here, just a little bit up in here. Now I don't want to go on the tops of the clouds so much as underneath where this pink went because the top of the cloud is going to be a little bit lighter than this and this is just sort of blending it into the blues. Especially in this top section where those blues are just really critical. And up in here a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of this Saladin Green. So I've got a red in there. I have a blue in there. I'm going to put a little green in here. So this is a very, very light green. It almost plays as a white. So it's going to go up into those higher areas. Above the pink, mostly. This is a color that's really good. I was going to pick white, but this one's got a little bit of something something in it. So I'm going to use that for now. And if I don't have to go in with the white, that's fine too. And a little hint of it up here and up in here. You're going to be moving some of this around. So I'm just going to hit the underneath of this cloud here and there. I can kind of pull it down in a minute and it'll create that aura around that upper cloud that would be cool. And I'm really trying to look at the picture for the most part right now and of course some of it is probably slightly different than how we started. It's not a photorealistic piece, It's a, but you know, you've got to have some of the cool stuff that's on the picture if you put it in. Then your picture will be cool too. Now I'm going to add in a little bit in the front here. And a little bit up here. Now, the next thing I want to do here is I want to take a look at this sky and follow where it's going to go around so that what has to happen is you have to have bring the eye up into the sky and you have to bring it back down from the sky. And, and then it has to catch in the ground and have different places where it's going to catch in the ground. So where would those places be? Like if you came down here, 
one place that your eye would catch is either on these trees or these cows. And if it went all the way down to the grass, we've already got a bowl. So just having like a highlight here, a little too much, like a highlight here brings you, let's say you've got a highlight here, here, here. Okay, so it's going to come down, it's going to catch here, it's going to catch here, and it's going to come back down here. And off we go. Now we can come back up through here and hit it this way. You can come up through here and hit it back up this way. And if you get all the way over here, boy, you better catch that before it goes off out of the picture. So if you come back down this way, you've got to have it so that it's going to hit this tree maybe, hit these guys over here, and maybe hit these over here. So um, give it a path is kind of a long way around saying that. Give it a path. And then this in here is really neat because it's got it's really it's like the super highway of path right there. This this is more of a yellowish color. I'll just stick a little of this green in here. Okay, so this is a really cool color I've been putting on here. So it's called warm white, and it's a color that is a really neat color. It's just a, a very very light and somewhat a little duller. It's not like a bright yellow. And what it does is like in the evenings, if the color changes in, around your area, when it gets to be sunset it, or sunrise, it'll catch that light and it'll make that painting look like it's glowing. And so this is like the magic color. Now I kind of just pulled this one out. So I'm just kind of hitting this bottom area a, a little bit more and then kind of up where the sun is hitting just a little bit and that will kind of make it look a little warmer and that's a good thing kind of at the top at the top now some of these colors in the shadow areas are, are not going to show up as that kind of a yellow so it's easy to get carried away. And up in here a little bit. And so it goes to the sun's coming from the um, right to the left. And so some of those clouds, now way up here it shows up, kind of. So we put it in. Now there's a section in here that's missing. Some of the bright colors. And in here. Now, one of the other things about that is, is that you could take and, you know, um, use your knife, if you can find it, use your knife to kind of put in a couple of spots around these cows of that same color. So that's adding your continuity to the bottom, because I just added this to the palette, so. And it doesn't have to be a lot. It just has to be a little, kind of, kind of, just under these cows, and it doesn't go all the way to the end either. It it just kind of peters out so that you can keep your keep your line coming down this way. And again, it doesn't have to be a straight line, but a line that sort of got some dashes in it would be more interesting than a straight line. And a little up here. Okay. Now we're going to take and do our magic, and that's start with our pinky finger again, and you kind of pick a spot. So let's go ahead and pick these mountains back here. Well, let's start with this guy. So he sort of got a, a little bit of, I don't know, fog or whatever that is. Maybe it's snow. 
and it's going down. So I'm really just going to tap this in. And every now and then you can move that color. It doesn't hurt to keep your reference picture handy. So that you can see, is this under this cloud or over this cloud? This happens to be kind of in the cloud. Um, some of this is just closer to us, so it actually has edges on both the top and the bottom. And bring it across. Now this is where the mountains are supposed to be here. So I'm rubbing my, I just take a, a, as clean as I can get my finger and just sort of rubbing that um, top of that mountain back in. So I'm using the color that's been dried before and try to get my line back. Now if I'm really lucky, it'll just look like, a, like the blending of this lighter color into those mountains, which is, you know, what it looks like when it's snowing. And I have to remember that the color I'm adding is the cloud side. So it will, it will butt up to the, the mountains and then it, and it fades off into, into the sky. On the top here is just sort of a ridge that has this sort of darker cloud comes in the front of it. Now I've kind of made a little bit of a goof there, probably, but I'm going to come back in and pull that, pull some of the paint off so it will show up better what the old color was. So I'm just going to get the blending in the best I can and then come in with the fine tuning after that. So anything I can get with my pinky finger before I get to a brush, I'm happy. Okay, so now we're going to hit this way into this cloud here and bring this down and then come back up. And then there's a little bit of sn snow coming across. So I always think <laughs> I paint what I see and then I pretend like I am that thing. So I am the cloud and you know my hand will will hopefully work for me. Okay, so I'm a little cloud over here. Now I'm the now I'm the mountain. So I got to pull that off. And I'm going to pop this in. And part of why I do that is if I try to take a brush to it now, there's a lot of a number of different colors, maybe not a lot, but a number of different wet colors now. So if you start trying to blend it with a brush, they will mix together and a lot of times it just dulls everything down a lot more than when you're popping it with your pinky finger. So I don't want to lose, you know, the good color too much. Um, I don't want it to stand out like a sore thumb either, but I'm trying really hard to figure out how to make this um, first layer we had to begin with and it's cured for a while, um, how to make it look like everything happened at the same session. So I found that if you tap it, you're going to get a, a thinner layer of paint on there. It's a lot easier to get that final touches when you put it on like that. And so everybody's going to do it the way they want to do it, and I'm perfectly happy with that. So, okay, that's coming along. Now let's let me get tissue here and then start up in here. So I can go one of two ways. I can actually start with this sky probably. So what I want to do is, is I want to push this up into this cloud, and. You're going to tap that so I don't lose too much color. And eventually, though, I need, it, I need to bring the color up into that cloud a little bit and then bring it back down into that sky. So why am I doing that? Well, because I want it to be very kind of fragile. I don't want, to, I don't want it to, to be something that I'm staring at a whole lot. It's just something that I want to get a gist of it because it'll look more realistic if there's a contrast between the middle of the sky and the cloud 
where and where the sky you know touches the cloud it's always a little darker and always a little lighter than the sky itself and so don't know what that's from exactly but that's my observation so now I have that going on now I'm going to kind of come down in here and hit these so I don't forget them in these darks and they're blending in very nicely I don't want to hit these lights too hard because they won't stand out anymore so I'm going to just hit these edges to begin with and go from there so I'm just getting a general rhythm and kind of come in here and find my shape try to push some of this um, into that shape a little bit more now remember the brightest colors are up in here and then a lot of the stuff on this side the colors won't be quite so bright You can, you can get a little bit more tapping done on this side and get that tamped in look. So keeping track of where my shapes are going to be, especially on those brights. So here's a, like a little bright spots here. So I want to make sure that they don't stay too bright without getting crazy. But if you, if you leave like a glob of paint, it'll go boop, your eye will go right to it and then it'll be it won't flow your painting won't flow the right way so now one of the things that I think for these clouds is if you just tap edges it'll look more cloud like now if you leave it blobby looking well in my house my husband would say that doesn't look like a cloud <laughs> so this is how I came to this way you know you know it has its own kind of organic shapes and everything but the edges are kind of where it's at and they don't all have to be completely smooth but there has to have a little bit of you know you have to be very cautious about leaving it too bloppy especially okay so here I'm, I'm hitting it at the bottoms and if I'm coming from the top down I can hit it at the at, you know going this way so it's a little bit of a back and forth because you're looking at a bunch of vapors that are just floating around. But your your photograph will help you with that. And hit this guy and this guy. Now, when it gets to this top part, if you just hit it straight on, that might work too. Now I see I, I probably missed a something here. So this one is sort of in the dull part of the piece, but it also comes in here. So if I find I miss something, I can always just add it right away and then work it in because I'm going over the piece in each section. So that's not a bad way to go. And these guys. So I'm hitting the edges, the bottoms, and, the, and in some cases the tops. Sometimes just straight on. And see I got a little bit extra on my finger and I can add it in. So um, if, if it's supposed to be added, if it's not supposed to be added in, then there you go. Mistake. But it's a cloud, so it's fairly forgiving. Now I have kind of a line right here, visual line. So I'm going to go over here with this guy and come over here with this guy. And then um, try to make it so that it doesn't come just in a straight line. So that does happen a lot. So I look for that too as much as I possibly can. And up here. a lot of tapping. Your arm might get sore. I 
and come up here now this is going kind of over this dark cloud so I can pull it up a little bit that way I have a little gray coming off of this blue so I'm going to tap him in and that's probably partly because that was um, a little bit too blue and now I'm going to take and it looks almost like it's coming down over this this is coming down over this blue this the blue is coming up into it so look for your direction and so I can wipe my finger clean and pull it over if I get too far into um, this kind of blue over here. Now I'm going to hit this, try to round that top off a little bit, and I'm going to bring this down like it's rain, snow, it's probably snow. It's <laughs> Now I come up in here. Now this little section in here is lighter, so I'm just put, you know, just I'm not wiping my finger off. I'm just bringing some of that light up there. And this guy is kind of the same way. So I'm looking for spots that have a little extra paint on it so I can get that carried through properly. This guy is kind of straight and over here it's light across now you have to be somewhat careful about all of that so even up in the sky you have sort of if I in my composition I have sort of a vignette so over here it's light and over here it's sort of got a dark kind of but I can come up and bring that down around I can change my design a little bit to accommodate that because I don't what I don't want is um, I don't want you to just go out of the piece okay now I'm gonna go right in here a little bit I think I've already done it okay the next thing is down in here so I'm going to just bring it down from this cloud up here and so I can take from the top, if my finger is really clean, I can come from the top down and press, put pressure on it down. And then that way that blue is going to get a line to it for that cloud. And then I have to pop it. Okay, this one's... Okay. And now I press that a little hard. So how hard you press it matters here. You've got a little glob. And... This is kind of a little floater. Now this part is kind of interesting because it has darks and lights in there, but you know it's kind of a broad area of the light color, but it has to have a pops of the light. So you have to be careful to leave those pops in. If you can, that saves you so much aggravation and time. It looks a lot more natural when you do that. Now this has blue at the top so I'm pushing some of this out of here and then it kind of comes down and underneath this ridge it has a little bit of um, I don't know, looks like it's lighter, fluffier. I'm pushing the top to get the line and I'm pushing underneath because it's a thin cloud and then bringing down some of that now I'm coming up from the bottom because these are kind of floaters and up from the bottom and up from the bottom and then down from the top and then down from the top and and through there because it's several float floating clouds together so it's a matter of knowing when to push and when to pull 
and yeah, leave a little in there and in there, and kind of go over here. Now this is coming all down in here. It can match up with that friend over there so it doesn't stand alone and comes down and then over here it comes it comes this way and up at the top it comes the other diagonal so it's just a matter of dragging your finger and clean finger works good when you're doing this dragging and so every single time I, I do the stroke I wipe my finger off and I have a little bit of the same thing going on here. Now, and up here, and up here. So these farther away clouds actually don't have to have nearly as much detail in them. So, you know, you got a pop, 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 and then the front you got pop, 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 and as you go back, it, it can be a little bit more, the edges can be a little bit more soft, so it looks like that. Now, I have this little pink, and for some reason when I rub it in, I, it kind of um, looks real pink. So I want to just take that and blend that in so it doesn't stand out so much like a sore thumb. And this comes down onto these mountains. Now we're getting to that part where it, the mountains are starting to show up better. And it, it isn't a line all the way across because there's some snow and such coming down through the passes there. So it's just a hard line here and a hard line there and the rest of it is soft. The best thing to do is to check out the your reference picture. Now I'm kind of ad-libbing a little bit but and right in here. So I'm coming across, now how do I do this? So I go to the top of the mountain and I kind of push at the top of the finger so that it makes that nice line. And then I'm gonna hit this guy. I don't wanna lose all my good yellows in there, but I want to blend it. Okay, so next thing I do is get out my brush and in this case, I'm gonna use a soft brush. And the reason for that is because I have really soft edges. So when I have like to put a lot of paint down, I can use a harder brush. This is just a blend. So let's stick with our mountain a little bit here. So I just kind of bring it up like this motion. And that is really just cleaning off the top of this mountain so that it has some you, you can recognize it as a mountain that way. Now there's a front mountain when it's dark. And it kind of comes along here. Okay. Now I have my back mountains and I can kind of do the same. Now these mountains are kind of wisps of mountains in a way but I did paint them earlier. So I can actually take a stiffer brush, see if this one works. So I can take my stiffer brush, this is like a little badger brush. It takes that paint away from what I just put on today. So all that yellow then is covering up this edge of this mountain. So it's a stiff brush, so I'm going back and forth to get, cut out my line of that mountain. And I have a whole bunch of snow happening, so I have to skip a spot. And then I come over here, and this one is showing up pretty good. Probably, there we go. And out of this snow comes these mountains. Now, a small peak here and a small peak there will give you the essence of what, what people are looking for. It doesn't have to be straight across. In fact, you get more drama if you cut it out kind of in a line like this. Now way over here I have a 
a guy off over here. Now I don't want to get too much detail at the edge. If you put the if you put the the detail at the edges, then it it can have a tendency of taking them out of the picture, and that's not really what you want to do. So you want to make sure your good edges start in a little ways, so that people can you know see that it's there, but it's not going to take them out of the picture. Taking you out of the picture is a completely the wrong thing to do all the time. <laughs> okay, so now I can come back in. You can see them, they're cool, and then I get rid of the stiff brush. Then I come back to this this calmer brush here. So I I can just soften this edge. It looks like it's all misty, and that's cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna think about this top guy and come in from the top and try to get this blue edge in here. So because the blue on this case, this blue cloud is in front. I might take my badger brush again here and just do the same. Just cut into that paint a little bit and get some of that blue bottom of that cloud to come over the top of these lighter pieces. And these are the times when you're happy you have a, a lot of brushes, but even if you don't have a lot of brushes, probably the, thing, the brushes I use the most are very inexpensive at this point. I do have some beautiful rosemary brushes, but just to show this, I want to show it with some affordable tools so that people can participate. Okay, so now I come up to the top here. And I want to make sure that every now and then I'm hitting it to get a softness. And that is what gives it that, that cloud feel even at the top and the cloud feel underneath because it's two clouds. So you don't want to have a whole bunch of hard lines and you don't want to get too soft. Who knew it was going to be so exciting? Anyway, now I'm getting this blue is kind of done. Now I can come to the bottom. And what I'm doing is I'm coming to the bottom of the color that I added and pulling it down a little bit. And not just all in one direction, but if it's an actual, some of them have shapes to them, and some of them just bleed right into the clouds behind. So if you can try to get that sense of things, then that'll work. Then that'll be like very nice and kind of, kind of realistic. So I kind of just up and down it. Now I'm keeping in mind that there's this, this grayish blue behind here, so I'm just taking it as dry as I can. It's got a little paint on it, but and trying to push some of that back up. So it's push and pull the whole time. And up here a little bit. And down. Now if I if I pull on a oh I'm gonna see if I can get one. If I have a little harder brush, I can push it away here too. Now this one isn't um, isn't the badger brush. The badger brush is really quite stiff. This one's a little less stiff, but if I push on it. I'll get some of that blue to come in through the middle of these clouds, which is just looks like you got a a sky hole, which is good because there is a strip of light down here. Like if you were to look at this picture, the shadow here goes up with this cloud, the shadow back here goes with this cloud, and then there's an open spot. So if there's some sky coming in and the light's coming this way, sky coming in over here that's good and because we put so many colors in our initial coat we're just taking some of this off so that that other color will come through
and down in here. Okay, sometimes this gets a little bit dirty, and we're going to clean that off. Now when I come back with my Gamsol, it'll, it'll pull some of it right off there, which is perfect. And now you have this little purpley blue poking through, which I think is quite beautiful. If you're going to do that, make sure it's far enough away from the edge. You want to make sure that your good spots, the, uh, the, the highlighted spots, are going to be just far enough away from the frame so that even if the, the light is coming from the side, the frame could have a shadow too. So you want to make sure it's far enough away from the edges so that you can get your drama in, in the actual view of the person looking at it. And I'm just, I'm hitting the bottom and the tops of these. Now this little blue over here, this cloud here, kind of has to cut into this other because it's in the front. So I'm, I'm taking some of the Gamsol and knocking this yellow back a little bit. And I want it to go in, kind of to be coming out this blue to come out like it's a, a real cloud so and it's coming over so it's closer to you the blue is closer to you than all this exciting colors here so yeah there you go now these guys go over the top so you gotta keep track of are you know, the clouds over or under farther away or closer to you Now this one has a certain amount of variety into it. So the, the blue cloud in front of this background cloud. And you're going to take some of this other color out because it's kind of got a line going. So I'm, I'm taking my Gamsol in my brush, wiping it off so it's not sloppy, and then come from the middle of the cloud down to create that edge of that cloud again. And this is one of the big advantages to building your first layer with number one, a lot of colors because you're gonna be probably bringing some of the, these back out and those under layers should have a mix of colors too. So it all kind of makes sense in the end. And bring you down. And it should look beautiful, most importantly. It should look cool and it should look beautiful. And even up here, you're going to hit the tops of these so that they're really cloud-like. And you can take a little bit of this light out in between. And a little bit out here. I'm still using my slightly harder brush to get that. And every so often I dip it in the Gamsol just to pull the paint off. It's I'm not blending it, I'm pulling it off. And then I'm blending. So it's still, you know, when you pull it off, it may have a hard edge you didn't want, like this right here. And you can just blend it in.
I'm pressing sort of hard. Not super hard, but sort of hard. And I want to have a cloud in the middle here that's just got gobbled up, so I'm going to build him by taking away some of this lighter color and let him stand alone. Now you just got to make sure before you move away from that area, you want to make sure that it's, you know, there's certain areas that are a little harder lines, other areas that are softer lines, and so, but they all have to have sort of a hit and miss as to, you know, where they kind of blend together. Again, remember, vapors. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to take you... This guy actually should be going down. And I'm going to take you over here and we're softening edges uh, where the mountains meet here and there, not not straight across, but here and there. And we're doing that because for some reason that just looks more realistic to the human eye. It doesn't stop you the same way as like if it's got a really hard line, it's going to stop you. That's what you want. But in a lot of cases, you don't want them stopping at every cloud. You want to pick and choose the winners and losers of the clouds. You, you leave like this guy here is cool hits these guys. This guy's cool. Remember we put these these t highlights in. Most of them are still there, so that's plus. And then just soften this up. Now we're going to just we'll just keep softening this up. And then we're going to come back and hit the edge over here in the middle. All right, now we're going to take a little bit of our Gamzol and hit this cloud because this gray cloud is actually kind of in front. And so we want to pull some of this yellow off of here. And pull it off. And pull it off. Now I can take my tissue and very carefully go back in and just hit these, especially these blue spots, because it still has a lot of that yellow on there. You only get one or two little swipes before you gotta move to a new spot on the tissue though. See how that made that look just like a cloud? <laughs> But you also have to be careful that you don't go over the top of something and then you you um, take away from the clouds that were on the bottom of your finger there. Now as you will maybe remember, these back clouds are softer looking than the top clouds typically because they're so far away. And you're trying to get that good feeling and Okay, so now we're going to come up the top and I'm going to hit the same, do the same thing to get this dark cloud to come over this middle section and um, make sure that it has a cloud-like feel to it, but the blue has to win. The blue part has to be the part that shows. Now I'm going to take my, I think I'll start with my softer brush and come in here and just kind of hit some of these edges. Remember, if you hit the edges, it's going to dull it down. So if you have a color that you're looking for, you've got to be super careful that you don't go over the whole color. And we're going to hit this and hit this. I'm going on the underside. And sometimes these clouds have a tendency to come swirling down. So that's OK. Then just paint, just, you know, hit that. I'm not purposely putting 
new paint on the brush, I'm just moving the paint that's been put on here. So the brush gets a little messy, but one way to work with that better is to, like if you had a lot of different kinds of colors, you would stick with one color first and then go the next color and the next color. But these all kind of blend together, I think, so I think we're going to be good. And the bottoms first, and then we'll look at the tops. Yeah, I can keep track of it a little better. Like I just go across in this section here or something, and I hit those bottoms, and then I move up a little bit and I hit those bottoms, and that way I won't be so likely to skip a whole spot because otherwise. I end up kind of um, jumping around and uh, gosh you just don't know what's going to happen. So then later on you go, whoa, you missed the spot. So that's kind of just my process there. Okay, so I try to wipe this off a little bit. Now this guy in here it's interesting because this is our light color and it's supposed to go over this this sky part and that will give you some definition between the cloud and the sky but it's got that little bit of a light color that hits the bottom of that cloud and that you're gonna see that if you really look for it in your photographs I call it an aura because you don't know what else to call it can just hit this in here because I added some color to it after it dried so I want to bring it all the way and I just kind of tap into it I'm not trying to smooth it all out in any way shape or form I just want to tap into it okay now I'm going to kind of look at it again and say okay so what are my main areas what are my main big spots here I don't have to do everything but I should kind of have a general direction for all of these clouds so I'm coming on the top and I'm going to keep in mind that some of them are not as bright so I can put the put my brush on there in different ways but I'm hitting that top to get it to look cloud like and then I'm going to bring it down over here and I want to keep a little bit of pop up over this one and I'm going to come all the way up under here and hit this guy and I um, come up with this blue and I want to make sure that I'm keeping a spot for this little blue over here and I have it coming kind of down into this so this is actually one that this cloud right here is one that I wanted to keep a little bit lighter and bring this blue in and kind of bring the blue up now we're going to come back and reinforce that with some gamsol to get that blue but any kind of edge you can get right now is going to be helpful in that so I'm going to hit this top and I'm going to hit this top and this okay. so I'm going to go ahead and keep going across just like that so I'm hunting for the blues a little bit the darkers and then finishing these guys off some of these clouds did kind of have little little tails on them so that's where the brush really is the powerhouse for those little misty looking tails and over here now over here I have it sort of a little bit bolder than it should be according to my picture 
and so I'm going to kind of dull her down just to kind of get some of that paint off of there and then when I come back in to pull some out I, I'm going with the Gamsol I'm going to have it be a lot less paint to worry about so I'm still trying to look for my direction make sure I don't have any lines cutting through this little line here is just a little glob of paint so it's going to be stay, staying there and I don't want to lose that one and underneath here okay so you got the under you got the over so this one down here is separate from but this is connected so some of it is separate and stands out and some of it's connected if it's too much of a blob it's going to look like not a cloud so we don't want that we want it to look like a cloud and so we're going to bring this over here and then we're going to bring this up now get these top guys kind of as close as we can get them and if we need to we can bring it reinforce with a lighter color again but in some ways you know it kind of builds itself it is kind of you you can make that decision aesthetically instead of following every single line so for me where is the pop you know you pop it this comes down here and this comes up here and now th these clouds are very colorful and I think most people don't really you know they look at clouds they like clouds but they don't really see unless their eyes are have been trained to see how many colors are actually in a cloud but you get a figure that the sunlight is passing through and the sunlight has all the colors in it so the colors that we see anyway in it so it only goes to show that some of these clouds have just hints of a pink and hints of a green and hints of a yellow in it and then of course the blue of the sky some of that goes in it too and then some of the shadows oh my gosh you know it gets complicated really fast so okay and I'm going to pull out some of the try to get some of this blue back in really well so pull out some of this yellow I'm using the soft brush I should probably use the, the harder brush but I guess it doesn't make that much difference I'm going to take a harder brush here a little bit bigger and pull out some of this and then um, kind of goes across and you can come from the top and you can come from the bottom and get that really nice and it's okay for these front clouds to be darker it gives them the illusion of being closer so go up and we're going to go up here and up here and so you pull some off and you leave little splots of darker and then you pull a little bit back down but you're really just cleaning up where some of this got a little blur, bloppy, blurry. We don't want that. While I'm still here, if I if I can get the kind of edge I'm really looking for, then I'm going to try to do that so that I can keep in my mind where I'm at. I'll probably come back with a soft brush anyway. But so here we go up in here. If your underlayers aren't really um, 
quite cured out like really dry to the touch you know sometimes you hurry it up and I've done it myself and you kind of end up pulling some of that under paint off but it's been a curing for quite a while a couple weeks actually on this one unfortunately I kind of uh, got sidetracked for a little bit then you you have you can push a little harder on this brush and get that color back out come back across come back across go back up to get that direction and so that's working good okay and this one here needs a little tapping in there okay and then we're going to come up here and hit this next layer you know it's going up like this so I'm going to come up here and get some blue up in here and if you leave it yellowish it's going to look dull so you got you know if you think about this the yellow and the blue are complementary colors so they they play off of each other really well and so if you can pop it in and out with these blues and the the kind of yellowish tone then you can really get a good interplay and it looks sparkly it just looks sparkly so I'm going to let this cloud come up a little bit up in here and up in here and in here and then come across Now, this is kind of the fun part where it's like you get a lot of really cool patterns in here. That's really cool. So long as you make them make sense in the terms of the picture, you're going to just enjoy very much certain as you know certain portions of the picture, and then you're going to have to like change it later because it didn't really match your composition and you're going to go, oh, I'm so bummed. But that's how it goes. <laughs> I'm going to take in here a little bit of And this, this up here is, I think, over the top. And so, you, you know, it's hard to tell in some spots, but just, if you don't know what to do, look at the picture. If you know what you want to do, follow your instincts. That's, you know, that would be my advice. Hit this guy to look really hot, tall to see. Okay, now I'm going to take my soft brush on the top there. In fact, I'm going to pick up one. It's clean and I'm going to just do that final blending where I don't want to take out, you know, I don't want to cover up my blue. I don't want to take out my cloud. So I'm just going over it nice and gentle. To be true to the design as much as you can.
So I'm kind of sweeping these in so it keeps you going in that direction. So if it comes down around here, it needs to be able to sweep you before you go out of the picture. So that's a consideration. bring some highlights back in. I can do that one of two ways too. I can come and make a fourth session or I can come back after I uh, eat some ice cream. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah, probably need to take a break and then take another look at it. See if it's if it looks pretty well done. I may only need to put in a couple of highlights. I may only need to go pop pop, pop, just like we did before, and then blend them in. And that would probably be the better option because if you can get it all done today, then you can start a new painting the next time. You know, And if you're doing videos, you can get your videos going. And so getting it as much of the footage done, for example, is advantageous to your productivity. For me, I, I always have a hard time moving to the next painting until that one painting is done, and not everybody feels that way, but I do. The advantage to waiting a couple days is you can see how it cures out. Some colors cure out darker and some don't. So if you let it cure up one more time, you're going to be just having to top some of these clouds up a little bit. You know, so you're really close. I think we're really close where we're at. And where are we here? So for me personally, I try to avoid huge, huge areas that are too smooth. Even this blue has got a little variation in it at the top and bottom. It's hard to see it, but it plays as a item that's not super flat, because that's your problem. Is When it gets to be smooth, it gets to look flat. Okay. I'm going to go take a break and then we'll be right back to see if we should finish it today. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to finish it off by going in and kind of making sure that my clouds have the pops in the right spot. It takes you down to those cows and make sure it, it looks like it, it'll bring you all the way back around. So we did this once before, but I'm going to just try to reinforce it one more time. So I'm going to start down here and I want to hit these yellows just with a little bit of zip. I call it popping. Now basically it's sort of like a stair step. Boom, boom, boom. You know your eyes going to hit it and hit this one and there's probably a little bit over here to keep you from going out. So a little bit back here and up in here. I can hit a little bit up here and here. All right, so that keeps you going down in this direction. I'm going to hit just a little bit of this green, I should say. Just cross here, a little one here, um, hit some in here and here. And what it's going to do is going to just bring me across this mountain range. Oh, that one 
crazy. All right, now I'm going to hit just slightly at the top of this and here and here and really kind of spread that out. Now if I come up this way and come down in here, I have a similar thing as to what's going on here. It's not quite as, as powerful, but it'll bring you back up this way. So when I, I want to be able to catch it up here, so it's like playing sports, playing ball or something. So I'm going to take my little spots and I want to come down here and come this way. And he comes up and then he comes around. So I'm going to hit this one and up in here so I could get it around the curve and then I'm going to come back down and this one comes around and this is just a little lip right there and then it comes down there and up in here a little bit and this one up in here and so if it catches it way up in here then I go around so remember I don't want it to I don't want it to go all the way out so I'm going to just reinforce some up you know several inches away from the edge I have a little something in here and a little pop here and a little something in here and so I can keep it going and I can hit this over here to keep it coming up now Okay, so let's finish her out with maybe a, a soft brush and just hit edges. So again, this is a dry brush when it begins. I'm hitting these bottom, the bottoms here. these are our mountains so you just trace the top of the mountain and that'll give you sort of a line here I made a boo-boo so I'll just fluff that out come down that mountain okay now I'm going to kind of uh, Come from the top of this one and just just hitting the edge, just hit the edge. Okay. Now I want to hit the edge of the bottom where these darks come in. This one up here. And up. This is a very soft brush, so. And up. I'm going over it just really light in case I, if I have to go over it more than once I do but I don't want to take the pizzazz out of it and then have to do it like yet another time so okay now this guy comes up and hit that bottom
know, I could just pop it, I'm just tapping it in and trying to come in with a straight brush across here and there. This really light touch to this. So I'm going to come up here. doing is just trying to tap it in and I'll be coming back and brushing it in a little bit more. I don't want to lose all my color. This is that little blob of paint. It seemed to pick it up. And one final go through with my towel. Okay. Comes down around, down around, down around, down around. Come like this down, down. Hits over here, comes around and down, and around and down. And up here goes across and down, 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 around the corner.
Just cut it down here. And you don't want to have too many of the same lines or, you know, like up in here. So just soften it. Come across. Comes down. Comes around from the top down. And then from the top down. And over here. Now come back this way. And kind of around this way. And down here. And around. So I'm going to come, come around so that it makes the curve, makes the turn. And new towel comes back. make it look cloud like and then down and then this way this way so if it gets up there it goes one of two ways and then we come around here okay so now we're going to come down the center and we want to give it a slight direction in both directions so if it's traveling this way or if it's traveling this way it'll work So I'll pick one, one way. I'm going down this way until it hits here and then it takes a turn. And I'm coming down this way and it hits this one and this one and it takes a turn. Okay. And, um, okay. So now I'm going to look at it from the other direction. So I'm going to come down this way and come across like this and around. And get that line out of there. And then come around this way. So I'm going to hit this over here and it's going to take me around. I'm going to hit this down here and it's going to go it take me around. And then this takes you down this way. So go like that maybe. And then it hit, it comes back this way. So it can come this way, it can come this way, it can come this way, it can come this way. Now I'm going to hit this underneath part here to make sure it's going to take me down to these cows. And 
and I have some that come right to here okay and so that's good and now these ones will come down to the trees and uh, move this out of here and down down and down And down, down. Okay. Now I'm going to hit this tree and there. And then I'm going to come back around here and get some of this blue cloud back out. And And my mountains are going to get some direction. And this comes down. Too dotty. It looks too much like a dot. So I'm going to hit this. Now I'm going to hit this blue up here. And then I'm going to come back carefully because this is the, you know, a highlight right here. So. I'm going to hit these guys so they make them look a little more cloud-like, but I don't want to lose my yellow. And so I just want to make sure it's it's bright in the right spots, and so the rest of those spots have to get dulled down just by tapping them. And hit this one. Now this one's coming down to this cow and this one's coming across and down to that same cow and this one's coming down to this set of cows in this tree and up here and a little bit this way Okay, that looks pretty, pretty darn close to me, so I'll put this mountain back in. Um, maybe I'll hit these other two. Mountain, mountain, and this little mountain, and <clears throat> this little mountain. And this mountain. Okay. And that, my friends, is what it is. So you can look at it in a few days. And if you need to make any changes to it, you can do that. Otherwise, I think that it's pretty close to done for me. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you give me any feedback that you have. If there's any kind of videos you would like me to do instruction on, boy, just let me know and I will see if I can accommodate it. So thanks again and best wishes.